Yo, 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 it's the Mally Bros Podcast, episode 122. 122. <laughs> uh, happy Friday. It's a rainy day out here on the uh, Washington metropolitan side. Are we still getting hit from and, uh, uh, that hurricane? I don't know. I don't keep up, honestly. Prayers to everybody that was going through that. It seemed like the world just moved on from that one weekend. Was going through. <laughs> 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 you think that's funny? No, I don't think it's funny. I think it's fucked up that you said it was going through. Now what? How you know they was? They probably still going through it. You the nigga that say some fucked up shit and then you try to double back. Nah, I'm not doubling back. But, shout out to everybody. I mean, shout out to everybody. We started with Emotionally Scarred. With that juice clip, every time we start the podcast, I get indigestion. I don't know what it is. I don't Maybe know it's what because it is. you weren't ready to like start talking and you putting air in your stomach. Probably, nigga, smart as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gastrointestinal. But um, we started with an emotionally scarred. If you're going through it, you made it another day, another week, another month, and you know, we got this right now. That's how I look at it. What is he talking about? You ever be going through some shit and you're like, damn, you know what? This is some bullshit, but you made another day. Nah, 100%. And now all you have is this moment right here. Sometimes I'll be like, all I have is this episode right here. What's the point of you being down about tomorrow? Tomorrow's gone. <laughs> you only got today. I hate the motherfuckers. You know I what? can't be around somebody with bad energy. Because that brings down my energy. So you're selfish. So I can only be around good vibes only. If you don't got good vibes, get the fuck away from me. That's how y'all be sounding on Instagram, trying to be inspirational. You know what? It's too many people out here that, that don't want to get money. If you don't want to get money, then stay the fuck away from me. Because I'm only about my, my coins. Me and Candace was talking about <laughs> that. Nigga make 40 grand a year. Look, me and Candace was talking about how people these days, Candace said some spot on shit. She was like, people these days be trying to go viral with the sound, with the, with the inspirational sound. They want niggas to be working out and put their football videos and shit over it. So they say shit like... I wake up every day. It's only me. Okay, it's yeah. Me, you know what I'm saying? Me against me. I look in the mirror. I don't see nobody else but me. Mm. It's like, uh -huh. you want a nigga oh, working, out? working out? Or me doing my warm-up drill to yeah. that joint? My highlight tape. But yeah. That's what you just sounded like, boy. <laughs> Y'all see what Terrell got on? Come on, man. Alpha leaders. Let's get it. Shout out to my nigga. This nigga look like he got on some cardboard or something. Sure, I don't know what, what design is that. I don't say about to get that sweat. I'm not even gonna hate on that sweat. That's why it's actually kind of fire. Yeah, and meanwhile, took me a minute you, to get dressed this morning. You look like a Cleveland Browns fan, but you're not a fan of the Browns. You fan of the uh, the United Football America team Browns that play in Cleveland. This nigga's a hater. You look like an arena football fan. You look like an arena football coach. Weird nigga. Y'all don't even got a sideline. This nigga's behind the. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's behind the stands. You move out the side for your players go out, boy. <laughs> Remember Lil Dane played in that little flag football league? It was in that arena. They played in like the turf field on the inside. Nah, no bullshit. Yeah, that was dope. Damn. All right. A minute ago. You know what I want to start with? Where the fuck is Kamala Harris? Where is Kamala? So, hey, look, I'm not a, I'm not political. I am not a polit I'm not a politician as well. What are you People talking about? I just told you Kamala just said something about. Nah, but you know what's crazy? We saw so much of you. We saw so much of you pre-election. It's almost like as soon as she got elected, it was like. You know, people say she working. She busy doing work. She busy doing. She's the best vice president we've ever had. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know where Kamala is. I know she just released. They had a, a, a Latina something day or Latina something working with Latina community. I don't she know. Was Shout out to y'all. Uh, I don't know what she was talking about. It, it was on the gram. Do you follow her on IG? No. You think Kamala a baddie? <laughs> Keep it a hundo. You was 40, you would talk to Kamala Harris? Yeah. 100%. Hondo. If I was 50 years old... Come on, roll up. Kamala, yeah. Yep. I would talk to Kamala Harris. I would holler at Kamala Harris now. Are you disrespecting your country? <laughs> Look. <laughs> How? How? <laughs> but yeah, she, was, she just posted the other day. Kamala was definitely fine when she Kamala was Kamala been posting? What you talking about? Three posts in less than 24 hours. She getting these flicks off. I guess she is. It just seemed like we ain't seen What is he talking about? She got mad posts within two thousand within, within, well, within a week. Kamala Harris nowhere. She ain't even posting that. That's the Flotus page. This is Kamala Harris, boy. Oh, no. What is it? The VP page? One I, thing, we're done. We ain't seen her ass. If you believe women rights are fundamental to America, that immigrant justice is fundamental to America, 
that LGBTQ rights are fundamental to, to America? Vote for Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> you see how they get us? Uh-huh. Well, I guess if I don't vote blue, what then I don't I- believe in that. I don't see black folks baked in that nowhere. I don't see black folks. Oh, y'all fit right in here with immigrant justice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little slice in there for you yeah. niggas. <laughs> <laughs> fellas. Probably my, my fellas out there with facial hair. You got a beard, mustache. You got the goatee, beard joint, the chin strap. So you got a beard. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, when you're, You ever tell your girl... Yeah, I used to have a clean shave, or yeah, I used to have a clean face, and you know, that was back in the day. I was ugly as shit, or I was, oh, that's back when I had a clean face. Oh, that's why I didn't have my beard. What's your girl say out her mouth next? You should cut it, or you wasn't ugly, or you some shit like that. That's what I'm getting at. You know what? You would still be handsome without the beard. Fellas, let me tell you this. Don't believe us. That's the biggest crock of shit. That is some bullshit. That is what your, your girl trying to win brownie points. And don't let her get no brownie points from that shit. Yeah. You didn't know me before this bit. You didn't fall for this bit. Don't try to act like you like what you never had. You know what right. I'm saying? I don't want to hear that shit. Do y'all know what we would look You know what I would look like without a beard? Completely different nigga. Uh, we would look, look your like jokes won't even hit the drink. same. Yeah, you just look like a creepy nigga. You look like nigga. a creepy ass nigga. I have a sharper chin. My, shit, my chin is sharper. So my head is a lot rounder up top. So I will turn smooth light bulb. Nah, yeah, I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna. My beard changed my life. It really, truly changed my life. I would never cut it. Terrence always says I look the same. Terrell, I, to me, has never changed his look. If y'all look at the videos, it's like, damn, this nigga Terrence was on some different shit. This nigga Terrell, to me, looks the same. Yeah, cause you did the prison break buzz cut at one point. Then you cut the beard off and you went down to the short. But you mm-hmm. know what? Now that I have like a like a full desk. I might cut this down, but then nah, again, see, nah. Nick, you then you gonna look, look like, like, yeah, I don't want to look like the la- late season Martin. Remember Martin in the latest season? <laughs> nah, yeah. See, or you just gonna look like BET new movie black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but look, Terrell kept the beard ever since I introduced him to it. Terrence, please, ever man, since I introduced please. him to the to the beard, he's never cut it. And Terrell, he won't give me the credit. And you know you what? You did look, not. You had you had a scruffy. Remember when SpongeBob and Patrick wore the sideburns on their face? That's all I can when do. When they thought it was being grown, that's what you had. This nigga saw me watering a plant and had a couple leaves and said, I'm going to water mine. And look, never got rid of his garden. I done moved on. Well, I didn't move on from my garden, but I tried, I tried some different things. I, I took everything out, put some new stuff in. He's still working with the same shit that he started with. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I Matter of fact, if it's working better, <laughs> he really don't fix it. Really James Harden. Think about people like James Harden. You can never cut your beard off ever. Ever. That's who you are now. You can't I don't cut. Th- I could cut mine. Nah, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to cut mine. Then when you start getting older, you get the salt and pepper look. I want that short, that short dark. If I could get it, if I could keep it dark but short, I would get that. Oh yeah, like the ghost, the ghost. Yeah. Right? Nah. All you gotta do is get some Beijing, put some Beijing in there. Nah, see, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but uh, nah, you ready to shit? Brush your teeth and fuck your shit up. Exactly. You see the nigga that was standing at the that nigga at the party that was sweating his hairline turned smooth wavy. Yeah, and I feel like we can all tell that your hair is black is blacker than it's supposed to be. When you niggas that get the black out. I had employees that used to take the pepper shaker joint, knock the joint over their head. Yeah. You knock it in. But when it used to rain, he would be like, he would call me and be like, yo, I'm about to run in there, but I need you to give me another shirt. And I used to be like, bro, you have to stop doing this shit. I don't have shirts to just be giving out. Oh, because the shit be Because up. the shit will run down his back and his whole collar would be black. Damn, see, that's fucked up. You niggas can't even take your, your, your lanyards off without that shit. <laughs> <laughs> powder puff popping off the top of your head. See, I would never do that. I just rock my ball spot. Work on your crown. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I rock my ball spot because one day I'm gonna say, "Damn, look at my ball spot back then." I wish, wish it was I still, still had that. <laughs> right when this nigga has a uh, my shit look like the the super dome. Mm-hmm. And I'm holding on to my shit every wave. <laughs> but you know what? That is a fucking lie. Your girl say you still gonna be handsome without it? No, she would have left your ass in the DM or on red or would have said no. I have a boyfriend or whatever. How you ever met? With the other way it could have went, it would have went that way. Nah, yeah, that's a lie. I just was like, you know what? Y'all be capping. Y'all trying to trying to act like you fuck with me for me. How dare you? Yeah, you don't fuck with me for me. Nah, but they do though. Women do fuck with you for for you oh, more than looks. They go to red with his cape. I'm just I'm just I'm just keeping it honey. So do we fuck with them for more than looks? But they be bullshitting when they make it seem like, 
Oh, yeah, I would talk to you if you didn't have it. They probably would talk to you if you don't have it now because of who you are now. But up front, I would have never had it. Y'all going to stop acting like beards are like y'all hair. You know what I'm saying? Beards are like an essential part of your body. Like, would you still talk to your girl if she had one arm? Let's keep it 100. Your girl came smack at you, but you found out she had one arm. You wouldn't have talked to her. Do she have the mechanical joint? Nah. You just see her show up with the one arm t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, this is fucked up. It's not fucked up. But I'm not, I'm not, we're not saying. I'm just saying, damn, that's a vital ass piece of something that you would, you know. If she has the mechanical joint, then we can rock. All right, let me not say one arm because some people out there don't have an arm. Your girl got one ear. Some people have no ear, Terrence. You could just say it about anything. There's anything you can say. Let's stay with the I'm arm. just talking. Your beard is as vital as that. You got to make a choice to be with somebody with one ear. I would talk to somebody. That, if my girl had one arm and it was mechanical, I might, I might see what that's about. What are you trying to see what that's about? <laughs> this nigga's on some weird shit. Because what, what are you getting? What are you gaining? And she might could be able to, I don't know, do something crazy with the hand. With the with the metal <laughs> arm? You're tripping. She take that, that shit fall off and your shit going right with it. <laughs> Terry, this is fucked up. Sorry, for sorry, y'all. We're going to get canceled. Look, we're going to come out. Look, I apologize. You know how they make the little YouTube apology video? I didn't realize what I was saying was going to hurt. Nah, yeah. Shout out to all my... Amputees. Nah, low key they live in the real life. You know what I'm saying? No. Nah. What does that mean? I mean, like, if they not gonna make no excuses, how can I make an excuse? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I see amputees yeah. in the gym. And I'm like, you Get know it. what? Would I let depression overtake me and not go to the gym? Or would I be like this brother and be in my in the gym getting it? Yeah, I would too. And I would get the leg. I'm not getting that boot that you like can su like stick your leg in. I'm paying the money for the mechanical joint so I can still squat. I want to have, yeah, like the little flapper joint so I can still run if I want Yeah. We sound so privileged. I know. <laughs> I Let's just move on. <laughs> I had my, um, had my goddaughter this weekend, or well, actually the top of the week, went to Sky Zone. And let me tell you. I don't know if y'all ever been to Sky Zone. If you never heard of Sky Zone, it's the trampoline park joint. It's like an indoor trampolines everywhere. And one thing that I did not realize is people go to these parks, yep. and they just literally unleash. You know how you go to the dog park and unleash your dog, and the dog the just run around. Run off. Yeah. You stand somewhere. That's what people do with their kids. So while that was fun, most of the time was spent telling other people, kids, relax, chill, hey. Who I don't know who are you, but what was they doing? They run real fast, or your kid will be in the little, um, the little soft blocks. Yeah, and they jump in them blocks. They don't give a fuck if your kid is right there. They just jump. They'll jump right on your kid's head. Oh, okay, they push yeah. each other. It was kids running smack into each other. There should be like some order, somebody who's there ordering the kids. You know, they got these sixteen-year-old niggas that stand there with whistles, but they do nothing. They ain't telling people, yo, yo, be careful. They're not doing that. They're just standing there. And Loki, when I think about it, there shouldn't be no adults working there anyway. Not really. But you know what? That's the, re what I, the reason why I wanted to tell you that is because this dude outside the, uh, the Sky Zone, well, they, was walking, they was walking down the street, and he said, first of all, he was a dirty-ass nigga with dreads. He said, I'm sitting on a corner on a Locks. Locks. Dirty-ass nigga with dreads and a wife beer on. Locks. Locks and a wife beater. Um, dreadlocks, face tats, I'm the apex. Wayne said it, so fuck this nigga. <laughs> Disrespectful. <laughs> but he had on a dirty ass wife beater, two small skinnies. Mm -hmm. He was like, I'm sitting on the curb. Shorty gonna pull up on me and try to hand me $20 like I'm homeless or something. I said, fuck out of here. And you know what I was thinking? Damn. Let that be a PSA. If anybody ever walk up to you and try to give you money because they think you homeless, how do you look to the world? And then you know what? Hundreds of people probably saw you. Think about the hundreds of people that don't give people money. This is the one person that had the kindness in their heart to just walk up to you without you asking. <laughs> she tried to give you money. Everybody else thought you was homeless too, nigga. <laughs> That's funny as shit because he man to somebody giving you, the fuck is this for? <laughs> fuck you talking about? Nah, I almost, I got money. Get the fuck away from me. And you know what? He had on them, them Balenciaga, 
the the Skechers big joint, yeah, the whatever joint. So it's like, nigga, you look like you got them from Payless because we don't know they be- Balenci. <laughs> you got a dirty ass wife beater, jeans too small and too tight. Obviously, you had him for a minute, and he's gaining weight. <laughs> I'm giving him twenty dollars. <laughs> oh like, man, damn, that's fucked up. But damn, I honestly have never been to Sky Zone. I've always wanted to go and just jump around. But then again, I always felt like I'd be there for like twenty minutes and then be like, all right, I'm ready to go. One hundred percent that. One hundred percent. I'm not ready. I'm not, I was hyped. We got the little socks. Put the socks on. Maybe if you pregame, <laughs> pregame, go with your girl. I don't know. I'm trying to think of what would keep me there longer. But I would never take a girl on a date to Sky Zone. There's too many kids. Y'all can't even really get y'all a couple of these shit off because it'd be weird. Because there's a hella parents around. There's hella little kids. There's kids that are like two and three, all the way up to like 16, 17. See, I never been. I guess you're right. It's a great place to take your girl if she got a kid. Y'all yeah, like you don't, take your, you don't take your girl to Dave and Buster's for the games. You really go for the drinks, the chill thing, and then restaurant. Y'all, then you can maybe slide to a couple games. Nah, you tripping. You're not about to take your first girl to Dave and Buster's, Terrell, and then y'all at the game joint first. Nah, but what y'all do is you go and you get drinks. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like but then you, you wouldn't be able to get drinks and then jump, you yeah. know? They got $14 chicken fingers and fry combos. But we went to Dave and Buster's too, because I was just I had my goddaughter. I said, "Fuck, we about to do everything." So we went to uh, Dave and Buster's, and bro, going to Dave and Buster's with a three year old is fun for them, but it's kind of like triggering for you because they suck at the games. Damn yeah. So they'd be like, "Let's play Tetris or let's play Candy Crush," because they just like the fruits that are or the little spinny things. They like the color, but it's like you got to get three in a row. You you gotta. Damn yeah. The whole time is like that. It's like they're getting their first experience off, so you know what? We're just gonna let them rock, but damn, you're gonna let them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Let's play skee ball. Three tickets. What can we get? Gumball. (laughs) (laughs) I had to pay $20 for a while because we didn't have enough points. Damn. See, damn. Cause you know you and, and I like that they do that now. They didn't used to do that before, but now if you like, like if you have like eight hundred tickets yeah. and your kid wants something that costs thirteen hundred tickets, you could just pay the dollar difference. That's it. Actually, dope as shit. Yeah. We went to some backdoor arcade joint. Yeah. Where did we like, used to go? Where they used to have that dope ass joint, and we would have to take all the tickets. Was that Chuck E. Cheese? I thought I was this place. We used to go to this place called Jillian's. Remember Jillian's? Yes. That was the best arcade. That joint was all the way out in Arundel. Uh-huh. Well, and they we turned that, down in that joint. They turned Jillian's into Dave & Buster's out there. Mm-hmm. We used to mm-hmm. go to Jeepers. Remember Jeepers? Mm-hmm. Still kicking, right? No. Nah. Jeepers closed over in Greenbelt. That was one of the first roller coasters I've ever been on. That motherfucking snake, whatever joint that was, that, was just scary dragon, when we was yeah, young. That joint had to turn. First roller Introduce us. To, it's going to be a, a PG nigga going to hit you up like, yo, y'all was talking that shit today. I went to Jeepers. <laughs> If you grew up and, was, and went to Jeepers, then you a real 90s baby, for real. If you didn't go to Jeepers, sorry. You're not a 90s baby. <laughs> you know, 90s baby is starting to look like lame now, I feel like. Why? Wow. starting to look old. No, we not. I mean, 80s babies can still say they're 80s babies. Yeah, but if you're an 80s baby, you really look old now to the youngest. Fuck I've been seeing young a whole babies. lot of hate for, for 90s babies. Like, 90s babies, you're getting ready to be 30. You remember that, girl? It's yeah, like, but you up. know what? Fuck out of here. Because let's talk about y'all generation. Let's talk about our generation and y'all generation. Nah, let's not even talk about their generation. I'm just going to let y'all know the 90s, baby, 90s babies, to me, the best because we was there for both sides of the shit. We was there for the end of their shit and the start of this shit. It's nothing right. that y'all niggas are doing now that we didn't stop. It's a fact. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that, that the thousands babies or whoever come after is doing now that we didn't start. Mm-hmm. But the 80s babies, they were introduced to shit that we were introduced to at the same time. Nah, uh, yeah. Like this technology shit. And that's what I mean. We been we in that we in that sweet spot. We in that sweet. Cause look, don't you know that the, the remember floppy disc? Yeah. Most people, most of these kids see the floppy disc and think it's just the save button. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never seen that video where the old dude, they were like, what is this? The little boy was like, that's the save button. And he was like, floppy disc. You didn't see that? You starting to sound old now. This nigga bringing up floppy disk. You remember the floppy disk? Nigga, we trying to sound young, and this nigga's bringing up floppy disk. Fuck out of here. Who is this nigga? Anymore. I don't have no gray hair yet, so I still got my youth. At least we not sitting up here with two gray beards. Nah, nah, yeah. I can't wait to get older, though. Old man. 
Nah, you gonna be. You know what? Why? Like on some forty shit. Like forty. I feel like I wouldn't be bothered. It's believe it or not, it's dangerous being young these days. You got opportunity. I don't think these niggas see the the old dude and be like, you know what I'm saying. I think you have a less chance of getting robbed when you young. I mean, when you older than when you young, cause you look like an OG. All right, OG, I'm gonna leave OG alone. Leave the old man. I'm gonna leave that old nigga alone. It depends on where you at. They robbing old ladies for their purse at the Costco. HBO Max just announced a new um, Scooby Doo inspired Velma joint. Did you see that? Mm -mm. So they got a new rated R version of um, like a Scooby Doo spinoff. It's about Velma. It centers Velma, but Velma is like a Middle Eastern um, chick played by um, what's Kelly's name from. What's Kelly's name from The Office? Her. The girl that played Kelly in The Office. Really? Yeah. What the fuck is her name? Uh, Mindy Kaling or something like wow, that. Wow, really? So Her? So it's animated too. It's animated. Oh, so okay. The, uh, the Velma character is Middle Eastern. Fred is a white dude. Daphne is Asian. And the dude that plays the shaggy dude is black. Okay. So, a lot of people were up in arms about the fact that, oh, that Shaggy's black. First of all, they didn't like the dude that, like, the one that doesn't do shit, that just smokes weed all day is black. Whatever. But, um, there's no Scooby. And people didn't like the fact that they changed the races of both Velma and Daphne. They didn't like it. People are like, why don't y'all just create new stuff instead of trying to bleed everything from nostalgia and then put newer, like, new agendas or whatever into it oh yeah That's so there crazy. was like a there was a it was kind of like a, a split it's like i don't know what it is about like it's like people can't be original anymore we're just gonna take scooby-doo and then add a little spice to it add some think about what they really did take scooby-doo take the best part of scooby-doo out which was scooby-doo we're gonna add a woman lead so that's you know what i'm saying culturally forward or what do you call it politically forward mm -hmm. pc and then we're going to put every race in here so it's for everybody, but it's still the essence of, oh, yeah, it's still the essence of Scooby-Doo. It's still got the Scooby-Doo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of like, that was kind of like a thing at the start of the week. It was kind of like a, I mean, there's, a, there's two ways to look at it for me. They're trying to be inclusive, but I think the issue with sometimes with inclusivity is that they put it in stuff that people have already, things that are already established. Yeah. And. If you do that with anything, there's going to be backlash. 100%. Same with the uh, Little Mermaid thing. It's the same as that. Yeah. Like, I don't think that a lot of the Little Mermaid backlash came from racists not wanting to see black women succeed more than I thought that people were just like, why does do we have, it? like, the same way we feel about this, where it's like, why not create something new? Yeah. Well, so, people like the fact that they're, people want, well, this is the thing, too. White people want white characters to stay white. But when somebody else is made white, they don't give a fuck because it's just a character. That does happen. Nah, 100%. But with this, it is... It, it, I didn't really... I don't give a fuck. It's going to be rated R. I don't like that the shaggy dude is black. As the black guy in the room, I would have been like, who would you want your character to be black? Because you also got Velma who's black. Velma is like... <laughs> <laughs> Velma's what? <laughs> Velma's not black. What is she's, she? She's like she's like Mindy. Mindy K. She's like how Mindy Kaling is. She's not she's not black. A black woman. Let's do. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it. But <laughs> I would have liked to see a black Fred. But black that would never Fred. happen. Strong black dude. Why is my hey? Look, let's probably do this. Yeah, like that would never happen. They would never do that. The mm -hmm. only person that could be black is going to be the dude that smokes weed. All he does is smoke weed, and he's like, oh fuck it. The funny com comedic relief. And look, they didn't want to name him Shaggy. So we have Fred, Daphne, Velma, and they named the black dude Norville. Norville? Yeah. I don't know. I don't like it. As the black person in the room, I would have been like, I don't like this shit. But I mean, like, so there's a bunch of people that, that there's a bunch of gingers that don't like that Daphne is now Asian. Not yet. You can it's tell that they probably... Was like, damn, this about to be a hit for, for for them because they get a whole new character, new name. They're the only ones that get a new name, <laughs> and we still didn't fuck with it. 
Remember when, remember when Best Buy said we're going to have a Black History Month special sale? They put boys in the hood on sale, the color purple, that the was black terrible. Movies. That was horrible. That was terrible. What, what did they have? They had like, bro, it was bad. It was bad. I remember when they introduced. <laughs> I'm trying to remember all the bullshit that they had on sale. They put like, I'm trying to think of the items that they put on sale. They put, I know Black Panther and all of that was on sale, but they put out stuff like, uh, what are the black put, terms? But they had phone cases that had like little black, yeah, like terms, like some cringy shit. You thought I was feeling you, phone yeah. case? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was the worst. But yeah, but, but I mean, yeah. if y'all are excited, for, I mean, if you're a big Scooby Doo fan, I would be the most disappointed that they took Scooby Doo away. What? Where's Scooby? That's what people were saying. People were like, yo, this is like a new age, but we haven't seen Scooby. And look, I don't know if somebody correct me in the comments, but I don't know if there's going to be a Scooby character, but we haven't seen that. The story is supposed to be about Velma. Nah, yeah. I don't fucking know. Who really wants that in 2022? Scooby was a nickname that a lot of people used to use when we were younger, like growing up in high school. I feel like everybody had somebody went to their school that wanted to go by Scooby or somebody's name Scoob. on Facebook or something with Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga. We're calling you by your real name. <laughs> Daniel. Devontae. <laughs> Chick-fil-A has the stro the slowest drive through experience in 2022. Then it's ever According to fast food reports. Yep. No, in 2022, Taco Bell, Dunkin' Donuts, and KFC are the fastest. Now, <laughs> that sounds like a complete lie. <laughs> That's bullshit. I was... Well... I just told you that the drive me took forever this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Try to use my morning <laughs> against me. Uh, but I was in the drive through this morning, and I'm going to keep it a hundo. If they ain't got people outside, it might just be the worst. But can you really talk shit? Because who's really getting in the Taco Bell drive through Who's going there? Okay, first of all, Taco Bell makes bread. Second of all, Chick-fil-A has an app that allows you to pick up inside, curbside, or drive through and it's packed all day. <laughs> of course, they're going to be a little bit longer. Who's going to Taco Bell and who else? Dunkin' Donuts. Fuck out of here. Dunkin' Donuts? Their drive through is a beast. I ain't going to lie. Their drive through is a beast. Their drive through be taking forever. I used to be late to work every morning fucking with that Dunkin' Donuts right there on 228. <laughs> it don't take long for them to make whatever. That croissant joint they used to get, the croissant sandwich, it didn't used to take them long to make that joint at all. I used to pull up. Here you go. You know they give you a bag for everything you get. Your donuts. Sandwich, besides, <laughs> drink. <laughs> Thank you for four bags, but like, nah, no bullshit. Damn, if so you those get were the one four donut, slowest. they give you the little, the little sandwich bag. Oh size, yeah. But. If you don't put this shit in the big bag, hold on, wait. They said the Dunkin' was the slowest. They said K Taco Bell, Dunkin' Donuts, and KFC are the fastest. Oh, see, I told you, Dunkin' Donuts. I believe donuts up KFC. There. I don't believe Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts is the best. This is my thing. This is the whole curveball. Where is Popeye's at for slowest? Yes! Then Popeye's drive through take you a fucking... That shit takes forever. Nah, it does. It takes forever for the drive through It takes forever to get food anywhere. If you go inside, you standing in line with a bunch of motherfuckers. Did he call 758 yet? What about Wendy's? Who's going? They ain't putting them on the list because they numbers not up. And look, y'all still going to Dunkin' Donuts and we got Starbucks? Please. I would never step into Dunkin' Donuts ever and get coffee ever again. Why? When you, I can go you, to Starbucks. Well, you were getting a little too much. Look, whoa, 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 whoa. You got a little. Whoa, whoa, brother. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts still gets you right. Dunkin' Donuts doesn't necessarily. Terrence. Dunkin' Donuts donuts, yeah, for sure. But what am I going to Dunkin' Donuts for when they got Starbucks? For real. Because Starbucks don't really have the good eats. I'm sorry. I Don't nobody want a pesto turkey sandwich. Fuck out of here. That dry ass sandwich. I can get me a bacon, egg, and cheese. Bomb ass. Uh, nah, you're right. And you know what? Taco Bell, the, the motherfuckers that love Starbucks will say, Starbucks has a. All right, but look, this shit tastes like bland as fuck. Nah, no bullshit. And they I just got seen it. somebody talking about how Starbucks don't have sauces or, or jelly. No or jelly. For their for they, for they sandwiches. Fuck out of here. They, they got it with the coffee drinks, though. Nah, 100. They got one. I pull up to the to the Starbucks drive through intimidated. I'm like, damn, I don't even know what people motherfuckers be getting. I already know my order. I gotta I pull it. up my TikTok and order from that jump. I'm letting the phone play out the window. 
<laughs> you can't hear it? <laughs> Pull around to the front. <laughs> I was going to ask you something I saw on TikTok. Fun. Here we go. Here we go. It said, does a straw have two holes or one hole? It has one hole. Straw has one hole, you I idiot. I knew he was going to do this. So, Terrence. I knew it. All right, let's look up the definition of a hole. This is the, this podcast is going to be nothing that nothing really to take away from this. <laughs> nah, because some of you are idiots who think the same thing that he's thinking. A hole is an opening through something. Uh, is an opening through something. Gap, aperture, a hole in a roof. So, a hollow place in a solid body or mass. Okay, Terrell. My cup right here. What is this called? That's a hole. So how many holes is in this cup? One. Right. So if I put another hole right here, then what? Uh, that's not the same. If I put that's another not, hole at the bottom, then what? It would have two holes. Right. So a straw. But a straw is one big ass hole. Y'all are some top of the hole are, to are, the bottom of the hole. It has one hole on the top. Terrence, it's the one same. One hole on the bottom. It's still a straw. If it had a if it had a hole right here and a hole right here, it would have two holes. But this hole and this hole is the same hole. Then what about this? <laughs> Terrence, that's one hole. Oh, oh, so where's the other hole? Because shouldn't this have an opening and opening? If I this is not up a straw, idiot. You know what? This is exactly why I wanted to ask him this, because I knew he was going to be brainless. straw has one hole. A hole right here, and a, it has a Look hole. how dumb you sound. A hole right here, and a hole right here. <laughs> but it's one. It it's sounds one hole. Y'all are idiots, man. A straw has two holes. One at the top. One at the bottom. <laughs> Why are we trying to be difficult? Y'all can say what y'all want. That's like to me, the it's one. And we've talked about this before. That's like the is water wet thing. Yes. Water's not wet. Terrence, I, I fucking this hate country. this nigga. I hate this country and the people in it. <laughs> water is not wet. Water is water. Water. So if I stick my hand in water, your hand will be wet. Why? Because you touch water. <laughs> <laughs> That is ridiculous. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. I hope y'all know how y'all sound. The definition of wet is moistened, covered, or soaked with water. How can water be soaked with water? Because it's water. Terrence, I'm done with this. That's crazy. Let's talk about what happened with Devontae Adams. <laughs> so if I put my hand in the water, your, wa that your hand will be wet. You dip up towel in water, the towel will be wet. Your swimming trunks get wet. You get wet. Water is not wet. Y'all are some idiots. Y'all are idiots. <laughs> You're an idiot because, look, you know what? I'm just over it. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's talk about Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep trying to talk about Kam Kamala Harris? How great joke. the first black right, president. Bet. Let's stay on this. First African-American. What? Wait, hold up. Because I'm also. <laughs> <laughs> first African-American. Hold up. <laughs> and my others on there. Indian, Hispanic. <laughs> what did she say she was? She ran as the first Native American president first. And then when she ran for president, she changed it to black. See, I don't like that. Hold now, up. look, now she just signed the AAPI joint. The Asian joint. You niggas still got nothing. But look, uh, is a zebra white with black stripes or black with white stripes? This is a dumbass, dumb pod. There's no, I know, it's a stupid podcast. Why do we li well, Why do you even listen? Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was on some bullshit this week. <laughs> I think if you look at all right, if you look at a zebra, his mouth is black, so he's black with white stripes. Some zebras have white mouths. That's a fucking lie. I've never in my life seen a zebra with a white mouth. Terrence, are you kidding me? I'm about to show you one. A zebra, a zebra's mouth is black. Have y'all seen Madagascar? Okay. Black. Oh, their their, their mouths are black. Damn, that motherfucker look. There's no definitive answer, though. Look like that, Joe. That shit is beautiful. Why we don't eat... God was in his bag when he made zebras. Why we don't eat zebra? Because we can't get to them. We eating fucking pigs and chickens. <laughs> and that's our number one go-to, chicken. Why can't we have zebra? I wonder if a lion was, was in a, in a, saw a chicken, what he be... Geeks for you never see a lion eating a pig neither. That would be an easy meal. That's like eating a meerkat. I don't want this shit. Let me get that fat ass zebra. You know how big zebra are? Nah, oh, yeah. Wow, my man used the word correctly in a plural term. Zebra, zebra. Look at all them zebras. <laughs> so it's not zebras. I do that a lot though. It's zebra. 
it could be zebras. I say zebra. I don't do that. It's certain things that I don't call plural. Like I wouldn't say, look at the meerkats. I would say, look at all the meerkat. I don't. That's just me. I wouldn't say cat though. I would say cats. God was in his bag when he made zebras. Loki. If we keep it a hundred, that's one of God's best animal creations. Even though they're just you know just be getting dogged every all their lives from by tigers mm -hmm. and cheetahs and shit. The way that they look. Nah, yeah. yeah. Nah, but you know what? My girl be hating on giraffes. Why? Because she was like, they're next, they're, why are their necks so long for no reason? So they can eat from trees. They're the most pointlessly designed animal. Look, try to say that. <laughs> so they can eat from trees? Like, that's normal? <laughs> <laughs> but when you see giraffes, you don't see giraffes out there doing this look. You never see a giraffe biting off a tree. You always see the motherfucking head in the ground. That's bullshit. They eat trees. You I think never you don't like a giraffe till you go to the to the zoo and to the giraffe pot where that motherfucker come up to you and he right yay tall all the way up there. Mm -hmm. You know what? Your cousin's is the best uh, design joint. God, look at that design on a giraffe. Beautiful. Y'all just go look up a giraffe and a zebra and just look at the detail. God was in his bag. He said, I'm going to put a neck long on this one. Mm -hmm. He did look, the same thing for the you. The paper slid when he was making the, the giraffe. He, he said, "Fuck it, we going with it." You know what? His Shh, best creation. It. His best creation is your cousin, Armadillo. <laughs> you think that's funny? What do you look like, boy? <laughs> Armadillo is actually a dope looking animal. You look like the giraffe. Look at that weird looking motherfucker with a. You just was neck. showing it love though. It's got a dope design. You gonna get to the gates and God gonna be like, "When you just talking shit, back up, nigga." <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get personal with him. Where was you at for 400 years? <laughs> Where was you at for 400 years? <laughs> I'm throwing all the conspiracies at his ass for a, for a giraffe. No, nah, you know what? They gonna talk about you in this podcast. They gonna say Taylor saying a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> He was saying a whole you bunch gonna of shit. You gonna push me away for a giraffe talk? All right, Lila, let's talk about something serious. It, it, it. Freddie Gibbs, uh, new project did like. 19, 20, 21K. Quavo and um, Takeoff put out the uh, only, only Built for Infinity link. They did like 22K. And just last year, I, I think it was at the top of last year or whenever that was, when Culture 3 came out, they did like 131K first week. So we've been seeing a trend of like numbers being smaller, even going back to Kendrick dropping. Mm -hmm. Just not so like not going way back, but just in terms of like trying to put a a date on when I started to notice it was when Kendrick came out with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I came out and said, yeah, he's going to do an easy 350, 350, 400 K first week. And when he did like two whatever and change two, I think like 280 or something like that, that was an underwhelming number for what we thought. And it seems like, even before then, we started to see it, but shit don't really be doing like it normally do. 100. And we got a baby project today. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, he put out that single, and guess what? People are already saying, oh, he's overrated. Oh, yeah, see, I don't know about this. Y'all tried to say he was like Lil Wayne. So I'm already thinking, you know what? My turn did whatever it did. What was it? One, 197. One, my turn did 197. I don't see that coming for baby. I just feel like people tolerance is changing. Nah, yeah. I feel like we kind of had this conversation. I wanted to bring it to the podcast. And I also feel like people's albums, like Future's album, did the numbers that it does because of replay, the replay value in the first week. Future's album, that first week, I played the fuck out of it. I went and listened to I'm On One, Chickens, that Wait For You joint. People was mm -hmm. playing that shit over and over again, and that's plays. I think a lot of people these days listen to the album and say, oh, yeah, I heard that joint. It was, uh, all right. well, I heard that joint. But think about, like, Lil Baby's project. So I guess, well, because think about Gunner's project. The replay value of that joint was fire. I remember going to the gym, listening to just Gunner's project. The, the thought that, what the fuck, these niggas thought that I was playing. Remember that joint? Mm -hmm. Even a joint like that. That joint. The South by the South, South, South by the West, West uh, p pushing P, like that shit was a movement. What? Well, see, that's my question. It goes back to the likability thing. Gunna super likable right now. People love him. 
Mm-hmm. Same thing with um, Future. <clears throat> Do you think that plays a bigger role? People love Baby, but people people have like people hate on him. But I think I think it kind of goes back to the fan base at the end of the day. I think fan base, but also I just feel like if your music is good, I think if the Migos would have put out music that was just super catchy or I don't know something that everybody fucked with, I think that their album would have did better. Honestly, I think it was promoted better. The first album was promoted better. Yeah. That but all, Avalanche joint, they was in the little... They was they dressed up and they was doing the old school shit. They had the Jay-Z text message that came out that was like, yo, y'all went crazy on this intro. And they were like, mm-hmm. hoes, hoes, damn, hoes, damn. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just seemed like nowadays, though... But you know what? That, uh, that really, I only really brought that up to say this. Is it really important anymore? First week numbers. First week numbers. I mean, we t- we be, we talk about it a lot, and people have asked me a thousand times on Twitter because I always try to guess people's first week numbers. It doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to say anybody's doing good or bad, but I always try to say, "Oh, I wonder if it's this." Kind of like putting a parlay. That's what I told the nigga that asked me. It's like par- it's like when you bet. Yeah. But does it really matter anymore? Like uh, I think it was Cole Bennett, the dude that do uh, videos. He was like, "Let's stop worrying about first week numbers. A good project is a good project." And people were like, "Do you agree with that?" I would I would say that I, that I agree because I don't think everybody's first week speaks to the greatness of their album all the time. Based on how good Kendrick's album was, he should have did like 500 first week. Yeah. When you listen to how good that album is. So, I do think it's a dying thing where we give a fuck about it. First week numbers is going to be whatever. Honestly, honestly, or we could just talk about how maybe the talent level isn't where it used to be. Maybe we ain't gravitating to these. I'm, I'm not going to go back and listen to only built for infinity links that much besides the song we started the podcast with this week to the bone besides that nothing's changed joint besides i'm not going you know what i'm saying i don't see myself running back to that album the way i ran back to a gunner's album or future's album and i think man future's album was so good this year even look at somebody like the weekend you know yeah they said nba young boys joint that he just did 30 3800 degrees that joint is only supposed to do like 20 3K. And people was like, nah, it was a surprise drop. It was a surprise drop. But I'm thinking like, yo, like maybe, you know what I'm saying? I feel like if that joint was fire all the way through, then I think the numbers would go up. So I don't think first week numbers matter as much. But low-key, we still got to keep in mind maybe the talent or maybe the, not the talent, but like maybe the, maybe the submission wasn't what we thought it was. Or yeah. maybe, it, maybe it wasn't what they thought it was, you know? Yeah, and honestly, like, Bad Bunny's album did, like, 188 or something like that first week. Yeah. To start the month. I mean, to start the, like, in this year. This album. He's been beat for his first week numbers. Like, in terms of what that did first week, he's been beat this year. Mm-hmm. There's been projects, like, the, the <laughs> a bunch of projects that came out that did 200 plus. I don't know. I could have that number wrong, but I know Bad Bunny's been beat a couple of times. But yeah. the nigga went on to do 100K for like hella weeks, 14 weeks. But DJ Khaled beat Bunny? He did. DJ Khaled that had we- a number one. Yeah. Now, that well, Bad Bunny's first week numbers was like 188 or 190, something like that. So if you're with first, you put out an album, y'all, you do 229 first week, like Future, mm-hmm. you got me for your number one. You, first you're week. saying you mm-hmm. did more first week than me. It's like what they say about the J. Cole versus Kendrick versus... And um, but I, it doesn't matter because Bad Bunny's album, yeah, it did that first week, but then it did a hundred K again, then a hundred K again next week, then a hundred K again. So and it really does just matter. been selling a hundred K crazy. That's a good segue because I was going to talk about how Bad Bunny made close to three hundred million on his stadium tour, and yeah. I think they said that one is his story. Yeah, he's like, doing some Michael Jackson level shit, and I don't know why I thought that that was just the norm. I thought that you always made like two hundred million on tour, but apparently. Not so much. Mm-mm. And they just announced that Rihanna and Beyonce next year are going to do stadium tours. And I'm thinking, damn, I wonder if Bad Bunny's run has any type of influence on that. I mean, we know Beyonce been doing stadium, stadium. tours, but that is impressive. That make me say, fuck it. We about to go set out some stadiums. Weekend tour did good, too. Weekend tour did great. And you know what? That's kind of like becoming a norm. It's the been a norm for tour. a minute doing, mm-hmm. doing stadiums, but... The best thing about Bunny is that he did 
He did. Mm. Number one, there's people that were trying to say, I never heard a song by this dude. I have never heard a bad money song. And if you know what's funny, like some if you're not really in that culture, you yeah. probably wouldn't necessarily be able to spot it. But you probably have heard it. But he did FedEx here and he did um the Nationals part. So the difference is a lot of these artists will do like Capital One Arena, yeah. which is a basketball stadium. Nah. He did the baseball joint and the football stadium joint. Capital One wouldn't have been enough. Nah, yeah. I need to I need to be able to I pack need this joint out. To pack this and shit then, out. So not only are they selling out the seats, but they selling out the field shit on the field around up to the stage. So it's more seats than what you think. But that album is just crazy, bro. That album is crazy. And honestly, it really speaks testament to the fact that this first week shit don't really mean that. We just talk about it just because fuck it. I was going to ask you at the age of 80, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think will matter to you most? My family. Fam. Yeah. My grandkids. Yeah. Making sure that my son and daughter ain't doing no, no bullshit, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, by the age of 80, I want to be, like, comfortable with my kids' kids' lives being all right. You know what I'm saying? I want to have some shit to where they're good. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants that. Everybody wants the your grandkids, grand my great great grandchildren already rich. We all want that. Do you think that your health wouldn't be number one at eighty? Because well, what if you were like a Samuel L. Jackson bill, and you get up there and you still trying to get these movies out and shit? You know what I'm saying? Do you think Samuel L. Jackson's number one priority right now is his family or his health? Well, I think if your number one, see, like me, if my number one priority is my family, that means me being there, so my health is in a is. Oh in okay, yeah. I don't want to leave y'all, so I'm gonna do whatever I can to stay, as long as I can. Damn you. That remind me of that dude, that TikTok where that dude is like, my wife has to understand that she's not number one in my life. And they were like, <laughs> whoa. And he said, number one, it's my health. Because I need to be here for you. I need to be here for this family. I need to be here for these kids. And they were like, okay. <laughs> and he said, so number two is my workout plan. And he said, Num- number two is my fitness. Because that's going to lead to my good health. I'm be in there for you. Sound like he's putting all this shit in front. <laughs> <laughs> then her. <laughs> <laughs> then my work. My work. <laughs> That's what he basically said. My bad. He said, my health, my work, then you. Don't yeah. you say that's how a man is supposed to live, though. But damn, at 80 years old, I think, I think what would be most important to me would be my fam. My family and my health. But at 80 years old, man, I hope I'm a good shape 80. You know I will saying? be. You will be. I found out that, what's the dude's name that coaches the uh, Seahawks? I found out he's like 70-something. Pete Carroll, 72? I can tell you. 71. I think that's outrageous for you to still coach a team and still have the mindset to coach a team. I feel like I want to be smarter. I want to be smart as fuck at 80. Think about all of this 71. shit we're doing now, y'all. We should be gaining some knowledge. Some of y'all are going to have a 21-year-old brain at 80. <laughs> but you know what? The, uh, the And gen- I don't want to get lapped. Meaning I want to stay in touch with the... Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. This generation that's coming up, the, the fact that these babies know how to skip ads on YouTube, nah, yeah, that's crazy. I'm already registering that this is what I don't want. Like, I'm just trying to get to what I clicked on. We wasn't doing that, bro. We were putting block in the squid pants. They don't know that they're doing the same thing, though. They don't know that they that they skipping an ad that's trying to sell them something. They just know if I hit this button, it'll get to the video. Exactly. But isn't that as simple as pushing a block through the, you know what I'm saying? It it's is. It's really but- just like motor skills. I'm going to just press this button. They're not saying, nah. I'm not going to watch this ad. Yeah, and honestly, we need to speed up. In China, they be teaching kids certain shit in, like, first grade that we don't learn until, like, sixth grade Damn. over here. We behind. And so, but honestly, that's actually a great point. At 80, What's damn. Up? Terrence yeah. at 80. I don't know. By that time, your parents are gone. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't lost aunts, uncles. Certain cousins might go when you 80. Yeah. You got more years behind you than in front. Yeah, man. I just hope I got a real one beside me. You know what I'm saying? A real one. Somebody that's been there 60 years. Mm-hmm. Somebody been there, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, me alone. She me. knows me. 
<laughs> I know her. We gonna be old as shit talking about. See, a marriage is what. This is how a marriage works. I want to be on that term. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Same as these old motherfuckers. Hey, look, and this is a random thing, but I want to give a random shout out to this girl named Tamika. Believe it or not, it's her 25th birthday. Happy birthday. Her boyfriend watched the podcast, right? Uh-huh. She hit me. We don't do birthday shout outs anymore, but I thought this one was special because she hit me and was like, her dude watches the channel. Shout out to you, bro. I think his name was Philip. I think I saw that message. And she was like that. She just wanted to show him that she would like, she cares about his interest. So she said she watched over 120 episodes or listened to 120 episodes. That, that is real. That's a real one right there. You got there. a real one, bro. That's a real one you got. Your girl, you tell your, you tell your girl these days that you watch a TV show. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. They don't go watch it. Your favorite movies, I got posters on my fucking wall. They don't want to watch this shit. <laughs> you tell them that you like certain albums. You playing in the car, they still haven't heard it. What is this? What is this? This is my favorite fucking <laughs> album that I keep telling you about. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought that was dope. No, Happy birthday. No, for a sure. real one in your life for real, bro. That's dope. That Man, is you can never let that go. Yeah. I listened to 120 fucking episodes of that bullshit. <laughs> and you gonna fucking... <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. Did you message him that? Did you tell him that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure to let him know that one. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, fellas? It's me. Remember y'all did that podcast? <laughs> <laughs> now I need... Nah, like I said that. <laughs> now I need advice on the other side. <laughs> How do you know when you've fallen out of love? I and I was going to ask how you know when you've fallen in love. But you can start with... You uh, yourself, how, what, 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 what would you... What could you say, you know, <laughs> was somebody out there <laughs> fall out of love? <laughs> You see that interview with a little baby? <laughs> what you like in a girl? I like I like a rider. Yeah, you you like a girl that's it sounds like you want loyalty. Yeah, that's all I really like. Nigga, what do we you get like? Your ass up all the head. Thank you for coming. <laughs> the interview went no better. Both of you niggas is terrible. <laughs> Honestly, what can you do? I like you somebody you? That like a like down like a down tight chick. Like I like a down chick. <sighs> What's your favorite food to eat? I like healthy. <laughs> So what you think? You think fruit? Yeah. <laughs> that's essentially it. Yeah, it's like, all right, bet. Damn, what am I? I saw that. I was like, damn, baby looked like he didn't even really want to beat it. It was bad. Anyway, I think you know you fell out of love when you stopped giving a fuck about that person's well-being. Meaning like safety? I don't give a fuck if you ate. I don't give a fuck if you need help. Yeah. I'm always going to point shit back at you. Mm-hmm. You fell like, oh, damn, you fell off your bike? Did you have on your helmet? Idiot. Like, if you start Dumb feeling, ass. if you start looking for, like, reasons why that person is fucked up, or you stop caring, yeah. then you kind of went away. For yeah. me, I knew I was falling out of, I wouldn't even call that love. I knew I was falling away from somebody when I just didn't want to talk to you. I didn't have the, the urge to, like, check on you or talk to you. Phone ringing, you see their name, and you like, <sighs> fuck, this motherfucker. Yeah, this. I think you fall in, in love when you like, you can tell when uh, somebody in love, when uh, y'all could be talking about the most random thing and they say, oh, this was Shanique's favorite one. Uh-huh, yeah, she used to do this. Now we had them all. You know, I was just talking to her about this. That's, nah, you, yeah. you in love, Nate. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, to me, I feel like falling out of love or just being in love is like foggy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like you're going into a place. And then it fills with fog. And you know exactly where in love and out of love is. And the next thing you know, everything is foggy. You know what I'm saying? And you can, I feel like you can bump into that throughout the thing, like throughout loving somebody. Because like, you know how they say love fades? Mm-hmm. I don't think it fades. I just think it, everything just gets foggy. Think about it. If it's foggy outside, right? If it's foggy outside right now, you know that it's that store right there. Right? Uh huh. If it's foggy outside, you know that through the fog is that store right there. You know where you are. But so much time away and so much time on another side of it, then I feel like you're going to be like, I know what's normally on that side, but if I don't walk through this fog, I'm really not going to see. I really don't know for real. Mm-hmm. So for me, like, 
I think you could think that you fell out of love with somebody, but you really didn't. Y'all could just, it could just be false. You know what I'm saying? Nah, for real. So, like, somebody could call you and, and you could be irritated, but low key, you could just be irritated with that person for right now. I think, not nah, definitely, but you know what? I or, feel like, you, know, you could not care about somebody's well being for a certain period, but it could be a temporary. Yeah. Thing you know, you can still love that person though. Yeah, I think if you spend like you said, if you spend if you, if you spend enough time in that fog, yeah, you might forget what that is. You can forget. And then now you too far gone to even. The fucked up thing is when they go away, the fog goes away. Now you really gonna know what you know what I'm saying. Or when you finally make it through the fog and you get on the other side, they not dead. Damn. Yeah, that's true. I think you know you fall in love with. I think you know you falling out of love with somebody when. That person isn't your first priority anymore. And fellas, we know what that means. Like, low key, you start talking to a girl, you know that's that's your number one priority. You start telling your niggas, nah, I'm not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Start telling your friends, like, nah, I'm not about to, about to do this, or I'm not about to show up for for this, or I'm going to do this later. When you start putting your priorities first, nah, I'm going to hit you after. Can't yep. make it. D&D, we got to reschedule. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I feel like you're falling out. Falling in, like I, I feel like I agree with what you said. Like, that person being on your mind 24 7, they're not trying to like sad us out. That's not sad. But, nah, for sure. I love think is you weird. know you're falling in love with somebody when you get a little too serious about them, too. They don't call you. You trip for real. Mm-hmm. You start tripping for real. Sometimes you know you love somebody when they do some dumb shit. Not for real. When somebody yeah. sitting there mad and shit, you're like, damn, I'm probably like deep as fucking love right now. Or another nigga, or you see another nigga or another, another girl talk to your, your dude or something, and you like, why do I feel like this? Yeah. You know, like I'm ready to go to war. Hell yeah. You start thinking about the future. You start thinking about your future. Mm-hmm. Some, some people do that on the first day. First. I'm, I'm that person. Me too. I catch feelings fast, number one. I just, for a long time, I just never would say anything. But if we click, nah, then it yeah. works. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm the type of person on the first, the first date, I'm thinking if we're going to make it to the, the next step. You know what I'm saying? Not nah, like yeah. on some nasty shit, but like, are we going to be talking for a minute? Or can I see myself with this person for a break? Yeah. Or start thinking what y'all kids look like and shit. Mm-hmm. That's what you got to ask them questions. Big rock head walking around. <laughs> me and Terrell talking about that. Oh, for some reason, older people used to just be rude as fuck to me and Terrell. Mm-hmm. Remember? Two big head ass boys. Two big head. Look at them Two, big heads. Look at, look at them rock heads. Look at them odd shaped heads. Odd shaped heads. It's like, shut up. Let's talk about you when you was 20. Let's talk about you right now in this Walmart. Let's talk about what you got in this basket. Like, come on. Fellas and ladies, you are competing with your significant other's work bay. I think we talked about this already. No, we didn't. Okay. We did not. Because I would have remembered. Nah, you know I 100% agree with this. 100. The girl at work. Nah, fellas. Let me start with the fellas. Your girl has some nigga that work at her job that is the most thoughtful person in that joint. Mm-hmm. He's so helpful. He's so nice. Yeah. When he go to get lunch, she he gonna ask her if, if she want you want you want something from Chick Fil A. Bet I got you. And the nigga is nice. And guess what? Is he the most Moxie? Remember the remember the handsome fairy <clears throat> that used to come around Wanda and Cosmo didn't like him. Maximo or something yeah. like that. Is yeah. he like this perfect looking dude? No. But he's doing just enough. Mm-hmm. Does he know about you? Yep. But that nigga. Why? You know why? Because when you when you when y'all go through whatever, uh huh. She and that joint upset about something, and she is, might talk to him about it. Right. And this is what this is the difference, fellas. When you if a girl if a guy talks to your girl at the gas station or whatever, that's easy. They have no connection. I don't give a fuck at all. Right. This man that she work with, they stress about the same things. I'm about to say this some nigga, of the same people that she don't like. He don't like. Mm-hmm. They can. They already got some relatability. Yep. Via the work shit. And look, this is the biggest piece. 
They problem solving together. When it's a problem, uh-huh. he might be the one that's like, nah, you just hit this button here and you do that. And look, it's uh-huh. making problem solving. Meanwhile, you telling her, I was about to get to it. I don't even know <laughs> what it, I don't know what's going that's on. what I was saying. This nigga can problem solve. I said, look, you know what happens? I give you a real life scenario. I'm going to give you two of them. Number one, your girl's at work next to Cheryl. Cheryl's 58. Okay. But she worked with your girl. And you know what she's telling your girl? I love that Charles. He is so helpful. Isn't he? Every time he work, we just have a good time. And girl, he's single. Oh, you got a man? Oh, oh my bad. And, and normally, you know girl, Cheryl know the bullshit about your girl, too. And think about it. But not probably look. do much better than your man. Uh, uh, no, no, we never going to take it there. Cheryl just didn't know. Oh, what, and you know what your girl say? Oh, yeah, 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 I got a man, whatever. She's not admiring this nigga, but she does agree that he's helpful. She does agree that when this nigga works, it's better. Mm-hmm. So look, I'm going home thinking... In the way, way back small part of my mind that Charles is helpful. If I get home, if, if you, this, this your girl, your girl get home, you ain't clean shit. You haven't done shit. She doing shit on her own. And she says, can you fucking help me? Like, can you do anything? I'm just telling you, it don't look good for you. Because when I go back to work and Charles say, oh, yeah, I knew you was coming and I already did X, Y, Z. Fellas. Because you got to think about what women are attracted to. Exactly. It's that. Fellas, both of y'all can be handsome, Yes, but this nigga is a problem solver. Mm-hmm. And look, you can be handsome. All he got to be is work fine. Think about it. The white girl in hoes didn't like her bum ass husband, but she liked that black dude. Because why? Because I can fix that. I can fix that. I can fix That's that. That's a fact. She didn't like she didn't that nigga. Husband. She did. Oh, well. She, didn't she didn't like none of them she good old like boys it. out there. Yeah. But this nigga was on a has- boat with mangoes. <laughs> this nigga's not doing <laughs> shit. He don't have a job. <laughs> Damn, number one, he was the number one fix it. Look, he was he was curing people with them peaches. The fix it man. This man was like, y'all see, Mr. Andre was bald. He had some of my peaches. Who don't want to be with that nigga? <laughs> but but ladies, I got my eyes on the next peach that I want. <laughs> hey, look, ladies, if you, <laughs> hey ladies. And I was telling my girl, ladies don't like to hit this because ladies like to play the I'm not competing with anybody role. But guess nah, what? The girl that worked with your boyfriend, that's super nice, you competing with her. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Let me just d- summarize what I mean by that. I mean, you got to still do everything, all of the little shit. Nah, you're competing. I like the, that I like the term competing. I just wanted to explain what that means because some people probably don't know. Like, you still got to, like, stay on your shit. In Somebody's definitely putting pressure on and somebody. On. It's always somebody applying pressure. Ladies, mm-hmm. when this girl, it, the girl at the store that liked your man that he don't really think is fine, but he done worked with her for eight months. Yeah. So guess what? She's starting to look all right mm-hmm. in here. Yeah. <laughs> work fine. Work fine is a thing. Work fine is when somebody, you probably necessarily wouldn't walk up to him on the street, but you know what? So you know, now you know them as a person. Yeah. You've seen them upset. You done, done helped them out. Yeah. They done, done taught her how to jokes with her. Exactly. When she come in and she got purple bag of Skittles, and she said, do you want some Skittles? Do you like Skittles? And you're like, yeah, you know, I, I like the purple bag. Then look, next time she come to work, she got a purple bag for her and him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or I just got you these because, like, I the lunch you break, you know what I'm saying? Well, what we getting for lunch? That little shit. I'm basically taking Shawty on a date. <laughs> Feel me? So look, when, when, when he come home to you and you bullshitting... Or you just annoying as fuck? Nah, fuck that. See, because we talking about tendencies. We need to talk about regular pressure. The the girl that works with your dude could be fine as shit. And keep her hair done. Keep her nails done. Look nice. Smile at him. Flirt with him. Feel me? That's a fact. While you think, what I got to get cute for? You in the house looking bummy as fuck or... Or whenever y'all see each other, you don't look, you don't really give a fuck. You looking nice for your friends. Some of fellas, some of y'all go through that. Where a girl only look nice when she go out with her friends. Cause this, he know who I am. He know, he know me. me. He love me. Fuck that. Honestly, that is, there's, that? A truth, there's truth to that. Cause the shorty that's at work, think about how you look when you go to work. Some, some of y'all, some fellas, some of y'all girls look good when they go to work. You know what I'm saying? Damn, where you going? And look, but I'm just going to work. But when she see you, or when she come home from work. You don't get to see too much of that. You seeing bonnet. You seeing I'm in the crib for the night. Look, I'm gonna keep it a hundred, ladies. But Terrence, that's not fair. You gotta do it. It's, that's the same on both sides. It's the same on both sides. But look, who care more? Some of you niggas be sitting like around. Like you just said earlier in this part, your girl will love you for you. But if you a productive nigga, that's what women find attractive: the effort. Men, mm-hmm. we a little different. 
men a little bit more on the visual side. You know what I'm saying? That's why. That's why all I'm saying we we gonna fall victim to Shardy at work, who's looking good before we say, oh wow, she's a productive girl. She's yeah, actually no, a like workaholic. That. We find out right now. Nah, but Tansy, it is that thought though. If she buy you that purple bag of Skittles and say, I got you this because whatever. Mm -hmm. That's like, damn, you just y'all like did it because I don't want to make it a gender thing. It is, it's it's low key the same. It is. You're right though that it here. does have differences. Men are a little bit more visual. Every man, but Terrence, sometimes it's the work fine chick. It ain't even the girl that's super fine. That's what I was gonna say. I just think every man that works a job thinks that there's somebody that works at his job that's fine, that he will be a bitch for. You will be a sucker for. That's not You'll true. You'll trade shifts with her. If she say, hey, can you pick something up for me? You would do it. Terry, I don't even fucking lie. Terrence, that's not Every true. Every dude that, that's most dudes true. that work a job have a girl that, that they would be a little, a, a slight simp for. Because she fine as hell. And the only fine joint that work here. And I'd be damned if I'm not cool with the only fine joint. But if your girl, you and your girl in that great space. Cool, you know what I'm talking about. Stop being a then bitch. you ain't going to do that for none of them. Stop being a bitch. I'm just saying that because I never had nobody at my job that I was about to sit for. I had some joints that was that was work for. yes, you did. Tans, no, yes, you did. did. <laughs> you did. No, I didn't. This is pre you being in a relationship. I'm, I, I, this is pre you being a manager, low key. Even as a manager, there was joints in there that you were simping for. When? When we, we, we back when we was on this side? Look at him stuttering. <laughs> 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 He's scared. When we was back on this side? Nah. When we, I was 17 and... and Terrell, we not talking about 17. Terrell, you was old. As, a, as an adult nigga, there was no bitches that I worked Terrell, with but, right, that I would be a simp for or I would... Hell no. See, First of all... Simping is a, is, a, is a hard word to use, but I mean, I said slight simp. Like, you would, you would normally say no if it was Cheryl. Fuck no, I'm not doing it. But since it's her and you think, you know what? She jock cute. I'm single. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it for. <laughs> nah, I've done it before. Nah, I know because that's why I said most dudes have a girl that they like. Yo, what's up? Look, but dang, that's dang, yeah. But you see, <laughs> for me, it's not that. For me, it wasn't. I was at somebody. It was the work fine chick was at me, and I had to like. Yeah, but still, see, you know what? I see the games he play. How? <laughs> I'm not doing this no more. Because you no, try because to act like. That you wouldn't, that because you were just so about you your changing job. You know it. You making about. the nigga seem like a trash nigga, but making nah, it seem like trash. the nigga was. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that in most of these situations, it's somebody that's at you, not you at them or would be weak for them. Fuck that. We talking about. I know y'all not going to want to hear this, but it sometimes it's your man who's at shorty. He not trying to go out with her. Sometimes, but okay. He, okay, and then sometimes your girl be at, bruh. They're not trying to set nothing up, but you know work is you work. Change, you, but you, yeah, you're right, but you're changing it. We talking about how people need to stay on their shit because of somebody applying Be, pressure. Nah, see, but that's and not If your person is applying pressure, then that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing, but low-key, sometimes, think about it. She can't do it online and social media. She can't do it when y'all out and about. She's not going to do it to some random nigga, but the nigga that she works with, y'all are faking your trip. The girls that have boyfriends, I'm going to keep it a thousand. Girls who have boyfriends are the biggest flirts. That's a fact. That is a fact. That's a fact. Because they're not going nowhere with it. They can get their shit off. But they know that they ha they know you know that they have a boyfriend. So you would never do anything and cross the line. But they be the most open with you. The coolest ones have the boyfriends. Now, that's a fact. I, I And I can tell you that from experience. Son, I can the tell you flirts be the girls too. that have boyfriends. That's why I'm trying to tell you. Your girl is at work flirting like shit right now. Call her phone. Right now and tell her you got me fucked up and then hang up. Terrence, no. You no, toxic. No. Because she's she's at work right now flirting with bruh. While y'all are listening to this right now and you doing whatever you doing. Terrence, your girl's you at doing? work. What you think she doing? Ladies, y'all too. What you think he doing? Running after the pretty girl, running errands. I got you. I can get both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you like, damn, this nigga don't get the help at hand when he's here. Nah, no bullshit. Like, nah, we really just that. bullshitting around. Nah, though. we be talking about yeah. how we were talking about how uh, <laughs> the married men come to the gym and get their shit off in the gym because that's just what they do. Remember we were talking about that. Remember we were talking about that. Nah, yeah, one hundred. My bad. What's the name from here? Uh, nah, one hundred percent. Married men be full blown twenty year married, married in the gym, but still be in that zone like. So what you working on? Yeah. <laughs> nah, see, you got to get down here. <laughs> and then you'll really feel the, the contractions. But you know what? I didn't want 
that, that I didn't want my message to get lost in the fact that like the work thing be happening. All I'm saying is that you gotta steal your shit. You gotta still do the little shit. And one thing that I said uh, the other day, I was like, if your girl goes to work, yeah, and the Cheryl character asks, what's the last thing that your, you know, what's the last thing your man did for you that was special? Or somebody says, my man did such and such for me. That's so special. And your girl says, oh, that's cute. What's the last thing you did? Does she have to think about that shit? Do, do I need to think? Well, he does stuff. He never put your girl in that situation. Nah, yeah, I get and it. And that's just me being on man time. Never put your girl in that situation. Always do the little shit, whether it be flowers, candy, movie night, date night, whatever. Nah, yeah. Because there's a nigga that's applying pressure. Yeah, and sometimes they might ask you. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I used to have a girl that I used to work with when I was in a relationship back in, what was it, 2018, 2017? But, bro, she used to put big pressure on me, period. Because she used to say, does your girl cook for you? Does she send you lunch? Did you send you to work with lunch every day? Does your girl? She used to ask me a whole bunch of shit that I knew my girl was not doing. And was it a big deal? No. Mm -hmm. But she used to make it a big deal if I said no. So it got to a point where I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, she does. But that's because See? I didn't want to hear the, really? She don't do that for you? If, if it was, she used to say, if it was me. That's why I'm like, damn, low key. But that's that fog, though. That is what creates fog. Nah, Little like, shit like that. Because now when you go home and your girl didn't cook and says, I mean, I thought I was just waiting for you to door dash. I, I was just waiting for you. Now you the shit even, that this person was saying they do sounds like what your girl exactly. supposed to do. When you didn't give a fuck about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You didn't give a fuck about that. Y'all do always door dash. You don't cook either. You know what I'm saying? So she talking to you, but now all of a sudden, you foggy. Yeah. Because of that shit. Because the way that person's talking to you is like, they don't do this for you. He don't rub your back every time you come on when you live in these boxes every day. Yeah. This nigga trying to get some ass. <laughs> he wouldn't rub your back either. Uh-huh. Damn. I'm just saying, I used to work with niggas that I used to watch them. They, niggas used to work for me, and I would watch them. And I would pull them to the side and be like, I know what you're doing in here. I nah, see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But I need you to focus on these damn, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't y'all see how Terrell was the worst nigga to work for? One of the worst niggas. I just was, I was every, I was all of y'all before I was me. Therefore, I know exactly, who, I, I see you over there with her. I, she doesn't need help. I used to have to tell, who did I have to tell? My old Sony expert used to flirt. We had a new appliances chick. And my Sony expert listened to this podcast because he's not a Sony expert anymore. Used to flirt with the chicken appliances. And I'm like, yo, bro, she's good. Take your ass back to home theater. Sounds like you cock blocking like shit. Hey, look, at the end of the day, I have a job to do. <laughs> that means Look, you send him over there. Look, you send him over there. So go back over to, to Sony. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what'd you say your name was? How long you been working at? This nigga Terrell's a bitch. Hell nah. I was never that. <laughs> I was never that. And Terrence hates that I'm not a lame like he was. He hate that sometimes I'd be like, nah, that wasn't me. Because this bitch ass nigga, it wasn't, this bitch ass nigga has done shit that I have never done. AKA, he's been way more of a simp than me. Terrell knows that I was that dude at work that he's talking about. Yeah, I would have fired, Terrence could never have worked for me. I, I would, he could I would, never have worked for me, I would have let his ass go. I ain't gonna act like I was in Ari Joint's face, but like, I got mine for real. Wasn't I focused. Get, I was definitely that dude that I feel like your girl would, was coming to work and yeah. I was putting that pressure on, but I didn't even want she already. See, you was the annoying nigga at work. Nah, I definitely was not. The ones who work with me know. Terrell, you're a lame. I we laughing. We living. We long for. Sign. <laughs> Shit, it's fire. We just started with that. They're one. amazing. This is not Tech Corner, but this is something that I did want to talk about. These are some of the things that we use now that we soon will not use. I put inventions that will soon die. Meaning you might be using this now in your regular day, every day, but guess what? You're not going to be using that shit. You're not. Okay. And some of y'all are going to be surprised at some of the things I have on this list. I thought I could put a lot more on this list. <clears throat> but things that we won't use no more, things you use now that you won't use anymore. Starting off, your TV remote. How many of y'all go in y'all room and y'all say, damn, where's the remote? Have you, have you seen the remote? I do that all the time. Right. Guess what? Soon, I guarantee we won't even be using that shit. Because you're probably going to be able to just use your phone. Or you might be able to just go up to the TV and use it that way. Or your house is going to come with something that has a console that's a remote. No bullshit. 
a TV remote, the one that came with what you bought, you're not going to use that anymore. You, you can might already download your remote app. Hub. You know how people, you remember on, on Hitch where he had the console that worked his whole house? Mm -hmm. I know that they have Savant, yeah. Savant, they have control for all types of shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Soon, if you go in somebody's house and they say, oh, grab the remote, it's going to be like, y'all some old motherfuckers with the remote. <laughs> uh, air fryer. You know how the air fryer craze is going crazy right now? They're not going to use it anymore. You know why? Because every day, they coming out with ovens that have what feature, Terrell? The air fryer feature. And microwaves that now have the air, air fryer fry feature. feature yep. So I'm not going to need a countertop air fryer because my, my, my microwave or stove my will do it. My microwave and my stove can do it. So we running that air fryers now. I'm about to get me an air fryer. And why y'all think they only $50? They're trying to get them bitches in and out. No bullshit. Them bitches is like, what do you call them little, the joints that you spin? Remember them joints? Fidget spinner? It was like a fidget spinner. Air fryer. Uh, your iPhone. What you mean? Your iPhone. I'm not going to use my iPhone? Nope. This is the center of my life right here. Right. And soon it will not be. What's going to be? Something else. The reason why I say that, look at the, new, the latest iPhone release. What did they come out with? It was called the island or something at the top of your phone. It's the same shit. And next year, it's probably going to be worse. And we're going to start saying, damn, an iPhone is literally just an iPhone. We've had over 20-something years of this almost, right? But how are we going to make calls and stuff? How are we going to make calls? Look, this I'm not saying that we won't use a phone. I just think we're going to be using something else. And you know what it might be? Motherfucking glasses. Do you remember the Juni Cortez glasses that came out like that? Yes. That was, but I mean, if, we, if we're that, doing that, that's ridiculous. I know. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But if we had some glasses that you could put on... And I could just sit here and they do something where they can put this joint like right out here, but it's through my glasses and I can call FaceTime. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Something like that from my glasses. The my same glasses. way we have virtual reality. Yeah. Like I can call you and then you'll pick up, but it take you to another place and you have like, that would be dope. That would be fire. Just glasses or, or certain stations. You know how the they Black have. Panther arm wristband joint. Hold on, wait, let me just call my brother real quick. Hey. Not yet. You hey, know what bro. I think will be dope for Apple to do? This is just random. Uh, you know how we used to go to a pay phone and put in a quarter and uh -huh. pay? Imagine if they had stations set up in different cities where you could literally do like a FaceTime, like a booth, but you could FaceTime. Like say you don't have your phone or you're missing your phone or something like that. You can go put in your Apple ID. Like say you lose your phone. You can go to this station, put in your Apple ID, face, I can FaceTime you and be like, yo, I'm at so-and-so, whatever. Put, I wouldn't want to put my Apple ID in. Maybe do a little contactless cash app joint. Bling. Something like that. And then I can just face I ID think that from would a, be dope, from though, a, because that's like number. the evolution of like, we went from pay phones to being able to FaceTime on the corner or something like that if, if you get lost on some last minute shit. That would be dope. But that's also, I just think your shit. phone is going to be obsolete. Like, low-key... <laughs> Remember we was using sidekicks? Remember mm -hmm. when niggas had the uh the Blackberries? We've already seen phones go from that phone to us using this phone to us using this phone. But you gotta think about the Blackberry era, how long that was. Yep. The next sale era, how long that was. And now we're in what year 14 of iPhone? Okay, but guess what? We're gonna eventually get out of it. Okay, yeah, y'all oh, no. had a good run. But I think I I don't even think it's not gonna be Apple though. Apple probably just going to come out with something else that we probably just going to be the Using main that thing. instead. Because when Apple first came out, what was, what was it? What was their number one joint? Like what? Uh, computer. The computer. That was the first thing. Then the phone pops. The mobile joint, too, was the iPod. Do yep. you remember when we was in high school, we did not see iPods going away. Nah. Niggas never. was in class with the wired headphones. With Blue that, iPod. With uh, the iPod. Mm -hmm. Man, and a nigga would play you a whole TCB album. And you could, yeah. I remember I used to ask this girl, let me borrow your iPod. Mm -hmm. And she used to give me her purple iPod. She had all this girl music on. My girlfriend in 2010 used to give me, I remember she had that Game Over uh, album on it. But anyway, I remember I used to only listen to that because she had... All this other girly music on that joint. And you just needed something to so say you can tune in and not do work. Yeah, but the, those days are over because low key you're not gonna give me your phone. You exactly, know? and that's that was the change though. They stopped. They put that that music app on the phone. Think about it. We used to. You probably still have music in your phone that you can't play because you had it on your iTunes. Nah, yeah. 
And like, it's like grayed out? Yeah. 100. Uh, just to keep going from that, Alexas and smart speakers and, uh, hey, Google, tell me my tell me what the weather is outside. Stuff like that. Oh, you it's mean like the little, gone. yeah, the Alexa machines. Yeah. The little, what do they call them? Dots? Alexa Smart dot. speakers. Yeah. Those are going to be gone. We're not going to use that shit for, in 10 years. We're going to be using those in 10 years? Why? Nah, they're going to be baked into something else. They're going to be baked into something else. Mm -hmm. uh, gas stations. This is looking far out. We're not going to be pulling up to a gas station in 25, 30 years. We're not. You're not going to see gas stations everywhere, I don't think, as much as you want to see. Think about how small it is now. I don't know, Terrence. Well, are you seeing the, the electric cars? All cars are going... All the, the big car companies have said that the future of their company is electric. Ford has electric. At one point, there was only Tesla. Now you got electric Kia, electric Ford, electric Chevy. Chevy. New Jeep is electric. The, uh, the, the Hummer is electric. And we can't have all of these different cars lining up at the Tesla charge. You know? Yeah. So but I think they're going to come out with more electric places. And then you could still go to a gas station, but you know how they're... Think about the number of gas stations there are to electric charging places. Mm -hmm. I think you'll see the switch. Mm -hmm. Yep. That'll be so good for the environment. But the fuel industry is a beast, bro. You remember that dude was protesting outside of that place, and that was a big thing for a minute? Yeah. I wanted to talk about that, but I didn't know too much about it. Leo somewhere listening to this like, yes. And these niggas are spitting. Uh, this is random. Broom. Obvious. Broom? Broom. Like a broom? Yeah. Brooms have made it through hundreds of years. They will never go away. I don't give a fuck what mechanical you have. I need a broom. I think That will never go away. Brooms are going to go away. There's no reason for you to fucking have that shit. I think it's obvious, too. Some of you don't even have a broom. Me and Terrell, we lived without a broom for two years. And it was wor it was hell. You did it? Trying to vacuum certain corners. If it was such a necessity, you would have went to the store and got it. This nigga still didn't get this one. I had to get this. We would still be without a broom. Uh, and I'm almost at the, the bottom of this list. No, you good. Uh, televisions. TVs. They getting thinner and thinner. Soon we're not even gonna have them shits. This is the thinnest TV on earth. This is the thinnest TV. Think about it. We're they not got the gonna... new, the newest OLED. Is you when you buy it, it's like a box, like like a little coffin. Yep. And it rolls out. But and then when you turn your TV off, it rolls down. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you're gonna be able to look get a TV that you can just keep forever, and you can just upgrade it. You know. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we would go to. And I think we're going to go to short throw projection. Short throw projection. Because now yep. I can put a little box on that TV stand. And as opposed to having to mount the projector back here, it's a short throw. It'll literally put it right on that wall up to 150 inches. Mm -hmm. And it can be ingrained into whatever I have. But I yep. think televisions, TVs, coming home with the big ass box, over with. Mm -hmm. Over with. Uh, next up, y'all not going to like this one. Manual toothbrushes. These jumps, them jumps, the joint that you just literally hold is not electronic. Who want them electronic joints ain't that good though. But that's the thing. I don't think in in the future we're gonna be using that either. How this the fuck is the most gonna... far fetched one that I have on this list? How the fuck we gonna brush our teeth, Terry? I think they're gonna have this big ass machine that you just bite down on, and it just brushes your teeth like that, and then you just come off of it. You know what? I have seen this mouthpiece type joint. Yeah, you just bite down on it, and it's like it, and it's joint. rushing all at once, and then you just get off of it. And then you can just, you you go about fixing that. But having a stick with bristles on the end, that's about to die. In the future, 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 future. Your kids ain't going to see that. I'm not going to see it. My kids might see it if they get 80. All I care about is my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your Instagram timeline. What you talking about? Have you been seeing what they've been doing on Twitter with the videos? If you watch a video and you scroll up, it'll just Go show you another, another one? Mm -hmm. On That's some a, TikTok shit? Yeah. I don't like it. I think your Instagram timeline is going to be obsolete after in like less than 10 years, honestly. Your think, Instagram timeline? Yeah. I don't think people are looking at their Instagram timeline. I think most people see. I think people do this. You get on your Instagram, you scroll a couple times, and then you're like, all right, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. I used to do this all day. Scroll up and look at everybody's pic. Now that they have the people you're following versus 
The suggested post. Right. And I'm not saying a timeline. I just mean your Instagram timeline. Mm -hmm. Low key, there's people who have TikTok and don't even yeah. post at all. Think about how obsolete the timeline is on TikTok for real. It's really all about your For You page. Yeah, mo they said most people on TikTok have no profile info. It's just a profile that they made that... Most of the people on TikTok don't post TikTok. They're just on there to watch. Yep. And you can just look at something that's already, your, your, your timeline's already made. It's not from a bunch of people you follow. I don't know. Is there anybody on, who gets on TikTok and scrolls their following? You yes. Might. Probably. I don't. You're not a real TikTokian like me, though. I don't follow anybody from that Mallory Rose joint. If y'all ever see oh, Mallory yeah. Rose like this TikTok or comment it, that's me. Because <laughs> I got locked out of my TikTok. Uh, last, oh, yeah. But they have following and, like, for you now. Yeah. They didn't used to have, like, it used to be all be baked in, but now if you only want to see the creators that you follow, like, if you like somebody's videos and you don't want to see anything else, you can do that. Damn. Which is dope. Mm -hmm. But you're right, because I'll get track, I'll get on my Instagram and scroll a little bit, but you ever click a reel? I can click a reel in somebody's story and without even knowing, scroll up, and now I've done looked at 20 reels, mm -hmm. and when I go back, it's that person's story that I was at that first reel. Yeah. I think more so, people spend time looking at explore shit anyway than their TL. Y'all ever y'all ever noticed? You go to a, I'll ask any of you go to a girl that has more than forty thousand followers right now. You go to her page if she if she's pretty or whatever. One of these girls that you know, damn, she popping on on the gram. Go to her page. You're gonna see one picture that has twenty thousand likes. The next picture gonna have four thousand likes. The next picture might have 15, 18, then three, then four. Then 15. Thousand. She, yeah, thousand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She's not having, okay, out of her 40K followers, okay, 15,000 of them like this. Nah. These girls' pictures be hitting the Explore page, and then people start liking what they see on the Explore page. Yeah. It's not everybody was scrolling their timeline and liked it. The ones that she has 3,000 likes... Didn't pop like that on the Explore page, and those probably do come from her regular followers. Yep. If you ever wonder why you scroll a girl's page and you see, damn, this one got 30,000 likes on one pic, and she only got 2,000 on this one. That's why I say your, your timeline is dying and everything and they hit is the algorithm different. becoming this Explore page thing. That's why they're adding ads to it. They're adding everything up. Last but not least, movie theaters. Soon, I think, a movie, I think the movie theater is a dying breed. I think soon movie theaters will have the same type of nostalgic experience that drive-in theaters have now, where it's very, yo, let's take it back, go to the theater and yeah. see a movie, you know? But I yeah. think soon, I think people are going to run at, you know what I'm saying, being able to just watch that shit on mm -hmm. your TV, it drops on the app, whether it drops on your phone, yeah. I just don't see new movies and, and I don't see movie theaters being around in the future. It's crazy, too, because it seems like COVID destroyed a lot of what are now going to be looked at as, like, antiquated shit. Yeah. Like, before COVID, motherfuckers were going to the movies. Dad would go to the movies by himself and just watch something. Yeah. Even him and mom would go. But now, it, mom, she, for a long time, was like, I'm not going because, you know, whatever. We started going back. When they started putting the Marvel films out, we was like, fuck it. We about to go and sit in there and watch this movie. Nah, yeah. Because I'm not about to get it spoiled for me on the TL because it will get spoiled. Yes, it will. Um, can you but, imagine if you could just turn it on, though? I know. When it drops, everybody can just watch. That's the best thing about it. So there, But that's the thing, though. So now what these what film companies have to do, if you are Screen Gems, I have to go. I have to get my money back up front from Netflix and try to promise. You know what I'm saying? Because normally you try to... With the box office, I can say, bet, we're going to make this much. We got these motherfuckers. We about to fill up seats. Mm -hmm. But now if I'm a Martin Scorsese, I know what I bring. I know what type of, everything is based on numbers. Everybody can, you can see everybody's, yeah. what they do. I can bring this viewership to your app. And it's like how Matt Damon said about like DVDs, posters, shit like that that they don't really sell anymore. He said, you used to be able to say, all right, we're going to make this amount of money in DVD sales. Yeah. Blu-ray. Blu-ray, 4K. I rem Trey, you remember them days of just 4K DVD. Damn, y'all got a DVD? Nah, it sold out. Yep. We yeah, sold we out. more of that one. You know? So We used to buy the, uh, the Steelbook joints. 
We got a couple of classic steel book joints. We got Infinity War steel book. But yeah, just to end that off, I can make I can put so many more on this list, bro. I had such a good time making this list too. You thought about all those from scratch? Yes, I did. Damn, I'm trying to think about what I could what, what you use now that you won't use no more. Bro, you can put so much more on this list. These headphones me and Terrell having out here on our head right now, might not be using them. This might be an old thing. This is an old style. Yeah. yeah, look at these old ass headphones these niggas got with a wire. Now you can do an earpiece on your on your off camera ear. Yeah. And now, yeah. <laughs> and then when I turn, it's the same color as my ear, so you don't even know. How these niggas hearing each other? I just discovered uh, the Black Folks Band Aids, the Hour Tone joints, not too long ago. Nah, no bullshit. I used to think the regular Band Aid was the only ones they got. Now they got the joints that like match like darker complexions. Which I think is where has this been all my life? Right. Remember, whoever did that, probably rich. Just to end this off, I'm not gonna say enjoy, but pay attention to the shit that you're using today because it will change. Ask your mom and dad, ask your guardian or anybody who's older than you older than you. A lot of the shit that they see now, like my dad was asking me about Instagram, and I'm like, damn, he really don't know. Like he just really has no idea what this is about. And it's just Instagram, but like low key. Your parents, the guardians before you, they grew up a totally different life than mm-hmm. we grew up now. Yeah. And your kids will grow up a totally different life than you grew up. That's why I said your kid can hit, skip that button. Fuck this. Kids will be like, Dad, just press this and press that, and then you can easily get there. You're going to be like, this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> no more than me. The way they learn in math. Oh, you know what's crazy? I learned about the number nine. The number nine is literally, you always talk about like the nine, the number nine represents completion and... um. We talk a lot about this whole nine journey. Everybody has their own journey, whatever. Um, if you take your hands like that and you multiply nine by any single digit up to ten, you'll get the answer on your finger. Put your hands up like this. All right. Now, what's not do nine times three, right? Nine. Nine times three. So you take your you count from your left and put your third finger down. One, two, three. And so nine times three is what? One, two, twenty-seven. Oh wow! You see that? Now yeah. do nine times five. And one, two, three, four, five. Forty-five. And then look, nine times eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put your eight finger down. Eight oh. eighth, idiot. And you got sixty. What is it? I'm sorry. Seventy-two. 72. Wow, so, yeah. That number nine is baked into your... It's literally in your in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for people that's watching the visual. I wish we had something if to sell. watching the visual. <laughs> so if you didn't believe now, <laughs> pre-orders drop. Yeah. <laughs> but dog. That's some dope shit, that's right? That's some dope shit. That means that shit to me is like legit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's legit to me. You got movie suggestions of the week? Movie suggestions of the week is Redeem Team. I knew this nigga was gonna do that. The redeem team, literally, it's the team that won the. It, it, it's the 2000, I believe, in 2008 gold medal team. Uh, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, D Wade, fellas, ladies, y'all might not want to watch that, but that documentary inspired the fuck out of me. I've been getting up earlier, been trying to get, you know, what I'm saying. Onto a better path after watching that, it just put me right back in my Kobe bag. I don't got much to say. It's on Netflix. The Redeem Team documentary, it it was just so good. It was so good. I've heard great things about it. Kobe Bryant is literally my favorite basketball player ever. My movie suggestion of the week is, is this terrible ass movie, y'all. Honestly, only watch it if you want to watch something terrible. It's called End of the Road. It's called End of the Road by I don't know who did this movie, but it stars Queen Latifah and Ludacris. It's on Netflix. Number one, Ludacris is the worst actor ever. You are terrible. A great artist, but you are not the one that went into acting and it worked past Fast and Furious. When he played, what was his name? Yo. Yo. What Uh, what was his name? I forget his name. I want to say Roman Pierce, but I know that's Tyrese. That's Tyrese. Figure out Ludacris's name. I mean, uh, Ludacris's name in uh, Fast and the Furious. That is the only role that he does that works because it's kind of like he's Ludacris just in the movie. But he pl- he that this movie. His name is Tej. Tej, right? Yeah. This movie is so bad. It's so bad that I enjoyed it. 
It's so bad that I enjoy to watch because we just talk shit. My girl knows that I'm, I, if, if I don't like it or if it's trash, then it'll be fun to watch because you're going to hate it. And I don't like it, but Queen Latifah is a legend. You've done much better than this. Ludacris is a legend. Both of y'all have done better than this. It mm -hmm. is a terrible ass movie, but I low-key enjoyed how bad it was. So that's my movie suggestion of the week. Ludacris was in every single one of the Fast and Furious after Fast and Furious, fa Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah. That's Cray. John Singleton. Mm-hmm. And he got all these movies under his belt. John Singleton said, fuck it, I'm He was in Crash. He was in Crash. He played, well, he, that's a great movie. That's a great movie. Where yeah. is that? Is that on Netflix anywhere? Crash. Is that streaming anywhere? You can Amazon? watch it on Apple TV, Amazon, Amazon Prime Video. Crash is another good one. Crash Terrence Howard. Mm-hmm. But that's my movie suggestion of the week. Honestly, just put it on the background or something because this is not the best movie. Or you can watch it with your girl if y'all trying to watch some bullshit. Damn, Ludacris was on Fear Factor. He was the new host. He was the host of Fear Factor. Mm -hmm. he, was one of, he was the host of Fear Factor when a lot of the IG uh, baddies went up that joint. Nah, yeah, there's some bad joints up there. Real quick, though, I do, I do want to say this. Uh -huh. If there's ever a song stuck in your head in the morning, and you didn't listen to it last night, you hadn't heard it in a while, you need to listen to that song. You need to, the first thing you need to do in the morning, if it's stuck in your head, you need to listen to it. Because to me, I feel like there's, there's like a, 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 a clue or like a key in that song, like a message, like a sign, like a sign. I'm just going to put that out there. If you ever wake up and you be like, damn, why is this song of all songs stuck in my head? You need to listen to that song and listen to the words and listen to the melody or whatever and figure it out. Trust me. This morning, Terrence, I don't know if this is going to work. It's going to work, bro. What you mean? Not, not I work. woke up the other morning singing body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. I don't know why it was in my head. Think what about it. What message is there for me The best that thing song? about it is you don't know the message. You don't know what you could have been thinking about. You don't know. It, think about it. I think it ties to everything. For me, think about it. For me, mine was Frank Ocean Nights, right? I kept waking up and hearing... uh. The beginning of it, like the loopiness of the, of the beginning of it, and when I listen to it today, I'm like, what would I, what would be, what about this song would like, fuck my head up? One of the the lyrics that stuck stuck out to me was, every night for every day up, and I'm like, you know what? I've been trying to wake up early, earlier. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, it's just called nights. You know what I'm saying? And it's like nights is really about the nighttime. But I've been trying to escape it. So some of the lyrics in the song just made me feel like, okay, maybe this is why it's stuck in my head for a reason. I don't think that you put that song in your head. There's like another you that could be on some, on some interstellar you from way out there trying to tell you some shit. Through body yaddy yaddy? Through body yaddy yaddy. Your dumb ass didn't listen to it. Maybe Matt Desai got on a serious tip at the end. I don't think so. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to step on what you're saying because that is honestly some truth. I would do it. But you already know what time it is. You know what time it is? <laughs> Turn up, man. Week six. Hold on, Terrence. I just want to say Jeezy just announced the B-Sides tour. For real? If you're, listening to, if you're watching the visual podcast, there's like a Jeezy drop uh, before every sports. But he just announced the, the B-Side tour. Of course. Not of course. tour. Not tour. It's an Atlanta show. I'm sorry. It's an Atlanta show. It's a show in Atlanta. We gonna do B side. That's all these old artists are doing. Is I'm gonna get up here and perform my old music. I guess we were gonna eat it up until there's nobody else to do it. But that's gonna be so dope. It is. NFL week six. We're not gonna try to make this segment so long. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We be on this joint forever on the sports tip, but we're not gonna rush through it. I'm just saying, yeah, this is some people's favorite segment of our show. Not going to make it so long. But just want to give a shout out to this Breast Cancer Awareness, I think, started last week, but also this week, this month, Breast Cancer Awareness. So just bringing that up and prayers up and Absolutely. special shout out to the survivors and people out there who have been affected by it, whether it's somebody who actually had it, people in your family. Um, 
Big shout mm-hmm. out to that. But it's week six in the NFL, and you know what we do. First things first, we got to show respect. Last week, and I was wrong a hell of a amount of times last week. So I got a lot of respect to show. I'm just getting back to 500. It's really? Yeah, you just getting back to, five, to 500. I have, and I have not had a sub-500 week yet. So, I, yeah, I put respect on my motherfucking name. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, first person that I think we should put respect on. Hold on, wait. This is not it. I'll just start. We got our ass whooped on Thursday. We didn't get our ass whooped. But the fact that we went out there and lost that game to the Colts, man, we are just – and when I say we, I'm talking about my Broncos, if you knew. We are just in shambles, and I love it because – let me just say this. Like, I don't love it. I'm, I'm not going to lie and say I love it. But sometimes our fan base, when we start doing bad, like, I'm not going to lie, we all came into this season thinking, bet, we about to be some dogs. We going to the Super Bowl. I said it. When we got Russ – we knew everything was good. We thought we was going to the Super Bowl. All they needed was a quarterback. Y'all saw how, how everybody had us on their list. Now that we're doing bad, we need to be outraged about it. We done spent $250 million on a QB. That ain't, it ain't working. And so I hate when our media, like when we beat the, uh, the 49ers and yeah. escaped that terrible game, it was a win is a win. And we like to run with the a win is a win. And so the fact that we lost, everybody had to like really confront that shit. So. It was bad though. It was terrible. Nah, yeah. Look for the first. For the, I feel like the third week in a row, we got to put respect on the Giants. Yes, we have to. The Giants went out there and beat the Packers. I did not think that y'all was gonna beat them. I honestly didn't. I did not either. Defense stood tall at the end of that game, so I'm putting respect on y'all. I'm putting respect on four and one. I gotta put respect on the Jets. Put up fifty point. I mean forty points on Miami. So New York once again. Nah. Jets, we're not giving y'all but so much respect. These motherfuckers had their third-string quarterback out there. Teddy Bridgewater got hurt. Teddy Bridgewater cannot stay in, uh, in, uh, stay without an injury for I'm telling you. He, oh, he's good to miss two or three or four games a year. But y'all done lost two or then they lost. I missed like, yo, we can put respect on the Jets because they did drop 40 points. Mm-hmm. And Sauce Gardner had a crazy game. But, I'm not saying you hating like shit. But like it ain't like y'all did. I don't like the. We, we beat the we dolphins. Give respect. Y'all beat the y'all beat the very damaged dolphins. True. Put respect on the Colts. Bust Denver's bro, uh, bum ass. We're not putting respect on the Colts. They look just as bad as we did. Yeah, we both right. embarrassed prime time. Uh, I put respect on the Titans. Went out there and beat us. Uh, but I felt like that was a winnable game for us. But we just fucking suck. Mm-hmm. I'll put also respect on Dallas, who went out there and beat the Rams. I did not think y'all was going to do with, to the Rams what y'all did. Me so. either. With Cooper Rush. Honestly, uh, Eagles as well. I said that the Cardinals was going to be the, the, the team that K-1 might go out there and beat them, but they escaped. Did Houston beat the Jags? Ah. Uh, because if so, I have to put respect on Houston. Houston did beat the Jaguars 13-6. to So I'm putting respect on Houston because I know for a fact I beat Damian the Jaguars. Pierce. Yep. Yep. Oh, that dude, Damian Pierce, is a dog. The beast. Shout out to the Houston fans. Browns. Oh, no. Browns lost. Browns lost, so I put respect on charges. Yeah. So, shout out to y'all. And shout out to the Patriots for busting the, the, the Lions ass. That was my favorite pick from last week. Raiders. Mm-hmm. I guess you can't count out my homes. You can't my count home my homes boy. out. He's a dog. Hate this nigga. All right, man. So, look. Week six. Uh, prime video special in front of the world tonight. <laughs> Thursday night. By the time y'all hear this, y'all don't know the winner. My Washington Commanders versus the Chicago Bears. I know we got some Bear fans out there. Bear down. But guess what? We're about to bust y'all ass. Fuck you talking is it about. at Bears? Yes, it is. Y'all playing as Soldier? You're losing. And they say Shy City. <laughs> Y'all you better go out there and dog y'all in Soldier's Field. Fuck you talking about, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> but look, we really about to go out there and do that to y'all. But if not, I'll show respect because low-key, neither of us should really be happy about beating each other. Mm-hmm. But I will pick my commanders to hopefully go out there and win this must-win game. Otherwise, Bears fans, I don't know what y'all record is, but we'll be 1-5 in five if we lose this game. And I'm telling you, we'll go into panic mode. And it looks bad for the Red... I mean, wow. It looks bad for the commanders because... The Eagles are 5-0, the Cowboys are 4-1, and, and the Giants are 4-1. And, 
if we go out there and lose one and five, we're gonna be we really gonna be looking I silly want out y'all there. to lose. I wanna see that. <laughs> a, part of wanna see us that. To, a part of me does want us to have to like yeah. have to get shit together, but I, I can't pull myself to want us to lose. I feel like we should go out there and be able to beat this team. If we can't beat this team, then I don't want to hear any talk about any other team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going with we the We arguably Bears. should not have won at all. Y'all that should be game, 0 5. Y'all, yeah. uh, the Jaguars dropped hella touchdowns. But I'm going to pick the Bears. I think Rokon Smith and that defense is going to get to Commander Carson. Commander Carson, the most <laughs> sacked quarterback in the league. Ah, Thursday night. By this time, y'all have already seen it, so. No London game this week. Okay. No London game this week. Sunday, the 1 o'clock games. We got San Fran at ATL. San Francisco. Their defense is the best in the league. I wanted to pick Atlanta so bad. It's in Atlanta. Atlanta. You know what? <laughs> Fuck that. I'm picking Atlanta. ATL, let's stand up. We almost did they that. They didn't even have Cordero Patterson. It's hurt. Wasn't he hurt last week? And they almost beat Brady in them. If they did not cheat like shit last week. Oh, no bullshit. Atlanta would have won that game and watch Atlanta go out here and win this game. I'm picking Atlanta. I'm picking San Fran. I'm picking ATL. Let's turn it up. What they say? ATL. We going to rise up. Oh, yeah. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> we going to rise up. The, the, Rotimi. The Rotimi track. Okay. <laughs> ATL, that city. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. All right. We got New England at Cleveland. I'm going once again with New England. Did you see Zap out there? Bappy, Bap, Zappy or Bappy? I, I thought his name was Zap, but he went out there and zapped them Lions in zero points. That that defense look all right. I'm gonna go with New England, dog. I'm. I bet this is the start of the run. I mean, I know we're gonna be out there in the uh, the dog pound, Cleveland. Y'all know I normally pick y'all. It's in Cleveland. I'm picking Cleveland. I'm going New England, dog. Bill Belichick said, "I'm back, baby." I'm back in. I'm better. I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking Cleveland. Nick Chubb is 1A and Saquon is 1B. Last week I had it opposite. But uh, I think Nick Chubb's going to go out there and give it to them. Pause. That's crazy talk. Jets uh, at Packers. J-E-T-S. Jets. 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 Let's go, Jets. Wow. I'm picking the Jets to win. Wow, that's a big pick. I actually picked Green Bay. Um, I thought Green. I'm, I'm just picking Green Bay because I feel like I don't. I, if the Jets win, it'll be like this Giants win. Yeah, the Giants. I think I the, heard somebody Terrell was listening to said that the Packers were like the num one, like one of the top most disappointing teams so far. Yeah, but like I but said, we kind of we- expected it because y'all lost Adams. Mm-hmm. And he, Ooh, excuse me. He didn't have nobody really to throw to for real anyway. Yeah. But I'm going to pick Green Bay, man. I'm going to go with Green Bay. Green Bay. But I'd be impressed if the Jets win that one. I'm picking. You know what? No, I am picking Green Bay. Sorry, Jets. I'm Listen. picking Green Bay. And you had the nerve to do they chant? My bad. My bad, y'all. <laughs> Shame. If y'all win, I'll show respect. Mm. Jaguars at Colts. Jaguars. Duval. I'm picking the Jaguars, too. Colts. I have no reason to pick y'all bum ass niggas. I'm sorry. I just feel like the Jag- I would love to see the Jaguars get the sweep on y'all. I want to see the Jaguars. Oh, so they beat them already? They beat their ass in the beginning of the year. I want to see the Jaguars beat y'all too because look, Colts fans had a whole lot of shit to say to Commanders fans when we got Carson Wentz. But guess what? I don't think that Matt Ryan is having a better year than Carson Wentz, and Carson Wentz is playing trash. Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan playing worse. No, nah, so, he's bad. Fuck out of here, uh, Colts fans. I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> what's their term? Or oh, what's their little joint? Their term? Duval. Duval! <laughs> Colts, what the fuck is y'all term? For the shoe. For the shoe? That's actually fire. <laughs> I can't say shit. Our joint is take command. I'm ready to get ready to say fuck out of here. New We're ass logo. Taking command to commander. Commanders! Boo. Do your real chant. We are commanders. <laughs> <laughs> And there, you, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. Vikings at Dolphins. I'm going to go Vikings because Tua is not playing again. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is out again, concussion protocol. So they have the third string guy is going to be our guy. You're not going to be jettisoning them. I'm going with Minnesota. I don't know if anybody saw the mic up, this recent mic up. Kirk Cousins is just a fucking model football player, bro. And it just hurts because he used to play for us. 
If you watch it, watch the mic up and watch just specifically Kirk Cousins' part. He is a fucking He's leader. a great leader. Like yeah, everybody great, yeah. was geeked up on the part where he did a, he did a QB sneak and he's laying on his lineman and he's like, "We just got in because of you, bro. We just got in because of you." Like to his to his lineman, everybody's like, "Kirk Cousins <laughs> is a fucking model fucking player." <laughs> I'm going with Minnesota. I'm going with Minnesota too cuz Jettas, please. I'm 2 and 3 in fantasy. Keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah, all right, they out Miami, though. And they still have weapons. Tyreek Hill, Waddle. They got yeah. weapons. That's true. All right, we got Bengals at the New Orleans Saints. And I'm going with Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm going with Joe Burrow and them I'm boys. going with the Saints. Marshawn Lattimore, injured. No way. It's like, nah, I don't know. Oh. I know Mike Thomas is out. I know. Uh, What's new? Yeah. Uh, no Jameis. No Jameis. Taysom put the team on his back last week. <laughs> <laughs> and I just picked that motherfucker up in fantasy. <laughs> we good with Taysom. <laughs> That's funny as shit. I'm picking the Saints. I'm I, hate, I don't like the Bengals. Y'all are supposed to be way better than y'all are. And I think they go out here and they say, look, this who we are. Show them who you are. Mm-hmm. Cam Jordan. Like, who that? Joe, uh, Joe Burrow. Wow, both who that? Who they versus who they versus who that? Yeah, cause that who that is Saints, I think, uh-huh. and who they is Bengals. It's Bengals. They stole our whole style, our whole fucking flow. Word for word, bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking the Saints. Let's go Saints. Uh, Ravens at Giants. Giants. This is where you lose. This is where the Giants lose. Now, if y'all I'm win. I'm sorry, New York. <laughs> I'm never picking y'all. I have no reason to believe that y'all are going to win. Against Lamar and them? I don't think I'm so. I'm sorry. I will hate on y'all niggas every week. It's funny because people say that we hate on them every week. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm picking the Baltimore Ravens. Giants fans, we don't believe that y'all are really a 4-1 and team. They don't want, they're, they're a team that has had, got some sneaky wins. I just don't trust... I don't tr- I don't know. I-, I need to see y'all beat somebody like Big Trust. Trust coming to town. If y'all beat Baltimore, I will have a lot more respect. A lot for the more guys. respect. And we say that week to week. They just went out there and bust the uh, not bust, but they went out there and won that game versus the Bengals. Like Lamar, you got the MVP coming to town. Let's see what y'all can do against him. But I don't think y'all gonna beat them. I think they're gonna dog y'all. I think they're gonna dog walk y'all. Honestly, I got Baltimore winning this game. I'm sorry. I- I'm not even gonna hate on the Giants. I love Saquon. I just though. got. I just got Baltimore winning this game. Be more. They're not going to dog walk y'all. They won't. It's going to be a close game, but I think it's going to be like a 13, 10, or 23 to 20 type of game. And Baltimore is going to escape because guess what? They got the most clutch kicker of all time. Oh, yeah. Number nine. Yes. Justin Tuck. Um, Buccaneers and Steelers. Tampa. I know this is eating Mike Tomlin up to have this many losses. <laughs> no, but- yeah. I'm going with Tampa just on the strength of Pittsburgh at the young quarterback. Tampa Bay has Brady. And Vita Vey is coming straight down the middle at you. So. <laughs> Ended. Yeah. Uh, but, I'm uh, picking the Bucks too. I just, I'm going with Tampa, too. I hate the Steelers. Didn't they just get dogged this last week? They paid the bills. Oh, damn, yeah. yeah. They did y'all dirty. It was 30 to 3. Yeah. Man, the, t- the Steelers are actually a team that's normally beast. You know what I'm saying? They're normally good as fuck. Nah, but for real. They normally have a stout defense. Yeah. But you lost JJ. Every time, they, you know they're like 0-7 without JJ Watt? I heard. 8, I think now. I heard. So, Panthers at Rams. I think this is where the Rams get a win. I think. I'm about to say. I'm Matt bad, Rule like, out. You got a coaching, coaching change. Yeah. Baker Mayfield turned out to be not a good investment. Mm-hmm. And I wanted Baker to do well, too. I don't think there's lo- I don't I mean honestly I don't think there's I don't think there's not time for him to get something going but then again yo they should see what they got going with Sam Darnold. I mean Sam Darnold was looking at right a little bit yeah. last year before there was this controversy of a quarterback. Yeah. And we do feel like they went with Baker because that was the story. Mhm. But maybe Sam Darnold's not it. I don't know. But I'm definitely going with L.A. Rams. The Rams Rambling. ain't really who we thought they were either. They'll go out there and beat a team like the Car, but like the Panthers. Yeah, but y'all will go lose to a Cowboys team that has Cooper Rush. All right, I need to go and watch uh, Jalen Ramsey's podcast. Cause what you gonna say this week, Jalen? Nah, yeah, Jalen Ramsey was talking big shit on the mic up too. 
So y'all lost though. So that's what I'm saying. And look, they stuffing Aaron Donald um, at the line. Man, nobody can stuff Aaron Donald. That's bullshit, man. That's whack. We won. He still went crazy. He got two sacks. But them other defenders aren't really doing enough. Leonard Floyd or whatever the name is, he ain't doing enough. So, what's the name going to get here? Donald. All right, we got Arizona Cardinals at uh, Seattle Seahawks. Division rival. Division rival. Believe it or not, I'm going with the Cardinals. I am going with the Cardinals, too. Nah, you know what? They're going to be in Seattle. Oh, yeah. Seattle plays good at home. 12th man. I'm still going to go with the Cardinals. And this is a division rival. Man, I want to get on that Geno train, though. Pause. Well, no, no pause. But, damn. I'm going with K1. Cardinals, Cardinals in a close game. I'm going with the Cardinals. I'm going to go Cardinals in a close one. Nah, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm picking the Seahawks. I'm going with the Seahawks and Geno Smith. Geno threw some amazing passes in that last game. Yo, yeah. for real. Like, Geno is making the Seahawks and the rush trade look bad for y'all. Yeah. We haven't gotten to y'all bum asses yet, but. Yeah. This next game is the game that should be the Monday night football game or the Sunday night game. And they should have put the Sunday night game on Monday night. And I should put our game at 425. Or 1 o'clock. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah, nah. That's a good game. Y'all it's game. a good game, but we're not good enough to. Neither of us really showed up like we were supposed to. But Bills and Chiefs at 425 at Arrowhead. You know who I'm, I'm going with. I'm going with the Bills. They're going to destroy the Chiefs. First of all, it's going to be like 35 to like 20. 35-17. I'm going. Fuck the Chiefs. Uh, every week is fuck the Chiefs. Fuck y'all niggas. Well, guess what? Them is getting ready to get a win. I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs. Why every though? time you what count. You think they gonna because every the time y'all count them out, what do they do? When? Let's see if y'all can beat the Bills. Bet watch us. Because didn't you say that about uh, Brady and them and how Brady had this number one defense? Their defense is one of the best in the league. And they went out there and dogged them. Look what they just did to the Raiders. The Raiders suck. Oh, uh, yeah. But look what they did to them. Even though they beat us. Chiefs, Damn, they would be 0-5 if we didn't let them win. Chiefs went down. Uh, <laughs> Chiefs went down 17-0 to and came back on them boys. You're you not doing that to Buffalo. Kelsey is a beast. Who did Buffalo lose to this year? Ah, uh, Miami. Oh, yeah. That guy <laughs> who is in Miami that's running around, guess who he was made from? This guy that's on the center in Kansas City. That guy that's holding the thing up to his mouth. Oh, what thing up to his mouth? The, the, the uh, uh, Andy mm-hmm. Reid. Him, too. Honestly, it's fucking tough to beat that team. I fucking can't stand them. First of all, get out of here. We still the best team in the division. I don't give a fuck about these last three years. Mahomes doing that spin and then chuck the ball. Like, I really wish we had a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes. But anyway. Look, we thought we had it. Our quarterback I don't just, know what the fuck y'all thought. I don't know why y'all thought that. We all knew that Russ wasn't no Pat Mahomes. I'm picking the Buffalo Bills. It's in Arrowhead, but guess what? We don't give a fuck. Y'all got Broncos legends on y'all squad, Buffalo. Coming, uh, coming around the edge. Von Miller, who's having a year. I'm picking the Kansas City Chiefs. We ain't fuck the Chiefs. All right, 8-20 game, the Sunday night game. This is actually going to be a good Sunday game night. Game of the week right here. Keep us from watching House of the Dragon. Dallas Cowboys at Philadelphia Eagles. Now, let me tell you something. I'm picking the Eagles. So, who you picking? I'm picking the Cowboys. I feel like the Cowboys are the Eagles kryptonite. I'm sorry. Eagles, let's look at... Let's That's lo- what I was getting ready to say. Eagles, please don't go out here and lose to the fucking Cowboys. Please! Yeah. Y'all will piss me off if y'all win all of these games and go out there and lose to the Cowboys. I swear it. Because guess, guess who would then be number one in the division? The Cowboys. They'll be number one. Y'all are going to go and let the Cooper Rush-led Cowboys beat y'all. How can we put respect on y'all name then? How? Last, this is a must-win game for Philly. It is. Last year, y'all got y'all ass whooped by the Cowboys, 41-21. to 21. Now, the defense is redone, and then they get their ass whooped again if I'm not... Didn't they, didn't, they, didn't they get swept? Who? Philly? All I know is the Cowboys have already beat us, and they've beat the Giants. The Philly, uh, Philly has already beat 
us. But I don't think Philly has another division, division game. game. So low key, Cowboys are lining them. This is a game that they out for blood. And y'all think y'all the shit? Man, this about to be bad. The best thing about this for Philly is that it is in Philly. They lost 41 to 21 last year in September and then lost 51 to 26 in Come January. On, Philly. Come on, Philly. I, I'm giving it, I'm, I'm picking the Cowboys to win. I just feel like y'all going to have some type of mistake or fold some way. Now, if y'all don't and they improve to 6 0, all right, Philly, get the fucking job done. Otherwise, you lose all respect. Philly, you need to get the job done. Otherwise, you will lose my fucking respect. And you know what? I feel like the Cowboys are going to win, and then y'all aren't going to be able to say anything to them, and they're still going to do what they always do, which is get in the playoffs and lose. Jack going to come back against a team that's probably chill. It's going to be cold in Philly that night, so hopefully that plays a part. But Monday night, the last game of week six, is Terrell's beloved Denver Broncos in L.A. At SoFi. At SoFi against the Chargers. Wow, that's about to be a good-ass game. Is what, it? No, I'm saying, well, it's supposed to be a good game. You're right. It's supposed to be a good game. But, man, I think I, – wow, I actually don't even have a winner for this. Who you, who you, who, who you picking? Oh, y'all, of course, probably. Of course I'm going to pick my Broncos to win, but, like, I'm not confident. We haven't got in nothing to be confident about. I'm picking the Chargers. I have nothing to be confident about about Denver. And low-key, y'all lined up to have a – this could be a massacre game. Yeah. Garrett Bowles out for season. Randy Gregory out seven weeks. Russ got a shoulder problem, so we might have Rippin come out. Brett Rippin. We have no running back. We just got Latavius Murray from the uh, Saints. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a good. he's good, ain't he? He – I mean he, – Murray again. We still got to trust Melvin, which we don't trust. What's y'all slogan? Broncos country. Let's ride. <laughs> Fuck out of here. You know our slogan. The whole league copying our shit. It is Broncos country, though. That's it. Broncos country. Let's ride. Add the let's ride, nigga. <laughs> Russ, please turn it around. <laughs> What's the Chargers doing? Bolt down. Bolt up. Bolt up. And then the Chiefs have Chiefs Kingdom. Man, this the- is a rival game. I'm going with the L.A. Chargers. Come on, man. I've been, uh, I've been above 500. I think we're going for it again. One more time, we give a shout-out to the breast cancer awareness survivors and those who are enduring and, and fighting that battle every day. Shout-out to y'all. It's y'all month. For Absolutely. Chargers, we bust y'all ass at least once every year, so I'm not worried about it. Hopefully we win. Y'all don't have a ring. Y'all barely have a championship. Y'all are the worst div- franchise. In the division. Who's the best franchise in the division? Chiefs? No. They have two AFC championships, two trophies. Looking at three and eight. So, we still the best. Raiders have three trophies, and they have four. But guess what? Y'all haven't done shit in 30 years either. So, uh, hopefully I'm right about all my picks because I fucking need it. (laughs) I wish I could put her in the camera, but uh, you can go ahead and play the drop. If you listen to this podcast, it believe it or not, it's Friday and it is Mimi's birthday. Turn up, she's six years old. I flipped the six upside down. It's a nine now. <laughs> yeah, me. Happy B day, my baby girl. Yeah, that was. Sweet. Face time.